The problem is real. The question is, is it an individual problem or a collective problem? A problem really is a claim of victimhood. You're being victimized by something. Sometimes that's true, sometimes that's not. And once you blame the society, you very quickly end up, if you do not have evidence, at a conspiracy theory. There's a group of people who are stopping you from solving your problem. You blame society, you don't have an answer. So it must be a conspiracy. And you're just asking questions. You don't know, right? This is the game that is played by so many corrupt commentators. Just asking questions. I don't have to show you evidence that something terrible is happening. I don't have to actually demonstrate how the thing is happening. I don't have to tell you who the problem is, wink, wink. But I can just tell you right now that there is a problem. But even, if, and, and if I'm asked about it, hey, I'm just asking questions. That's the thing that you have to worry about online. You can ask questions who are genuinely curious, but if I get any inkling that you are, quote, just asking questions, mm-mm-mm. <laughs> Ooh. So good already. Okay. Let's go. I used to feel like Republicans were better at denouncing the more extreme factions of their movement. Neo-Nazis and the alt-right have been denounced by all the right-wing leaders and politicians for as long as I can remember. Even though Donald Trump is probably closer to the edge of the Overton window than Joe Biden, Joe and other mainstream Democrats don't often denounce the socialists and communists the way that the conservatives have denounced white nationalists. And no one on the right denounced them louder than the Daily Wire. Mm. That's a very good synopsis of what the alt-right believes. And he's not the only one who says this, Richard Spencer. And one of the guys who was at this rally yesterday, uh, uh, a sort of Nazi sympathizing piece of garbage. And Nick Fuentes lied to my face, then lied about me on the internet. And then only when I figured out who he was because I Googled him, I realized, <laughs> and some might try to refute this in the room, but it's all on video, that he has endorsed Jim Crow segregation. He mm. has denied that the Holocaust happened. He has associated himself with fascism openly. He said if Antifa were fascist, mm -hmm. he would be marching alongside them. He has associated in the past with avowed racial bigots like James Alsop Yo, and Richard Spencer. Not to be such a stereotyper, but this boy is a stereotype right here, baby. Not that I'm against, look, stereotypes are real for a reason, but also they're not real for all people because people are monoliths. But bro, when you fit a stereotype, you fit a stereotype. But stereotypes are so boring and I'm so over them. But also... Though apparently now they're having something of a tiff from what I gather on the blogs. It is quite clear to me that he harbors racial bigotry. That's why I reject his politics. This is a letter from one of these Groyper people that I was talking about. What I'm what I am against, what I am against is demographic fatalism. I'm against the idea that new kinds of people coming in cannot be assimilated into the American system. That's absurd. It's it's what people have said every single time and every single time they have been assimilated in. All this bigotry only works because you discount the evil things that other people did. Every race has evil people. Every race has good people. All everybody, everybody is everything. I just want to say, considering everything that's been going on with Arizona and abortion rights and, oh, Flagrant has a whole opening case on which baby should be aborted. You guys should go check that out. Very interesting. Very funny. Love them. Love Flagrant. And it was in reaction to Arizona's abortion crisis that's happening right now. More than anything, this idea of assimilate into what is reasonable or expect like expected of culture. Oh, and I'm sorry, not to derail, but what's the state right now that's arguing first cousins getting married? Tennessee, Kentucky, something around there. There's a state, I saved it, I forgot, but there's a state that right now people are upset because they want to make marrying your first cousins illegal. And some people are upset about it. And I'm like, look, okay, I get it. The whole Middle East is married to their first cousins. It's a whole thing. But also at the same time, like, can we stop this, please? It's like the, we don't have to do that anymore. It's one thing to do things out of survival or whatever. And at the same time, there were a lot of love marriages between cousins. So like, oh, it's like, oh, oh. and then, mm, you know, there's like this whole conversation that needs to be had about, you know, mm, you know, maybe even if the love of your life is your first cousin, maybe find a different love of your life. But also I kind of understand it because I'm well cultured and I know like people around the world fall in love with their cousins and I don't know it's not like I don't know I don't know it's complicated and nuanced but bro this idea of like when you come to America you'll assimilate into which part of it which part of the country the country that's marrying the part that's marrying cousins or the part that's marrying gays it's the same states that when I legalize gay marriage are like but keep cousin marriage and I'm like girl ooh, 
you know what? Fine. Keep both, I guess. But like, come on, you know? Anyways, I just think it's interesting. Okay, here we go. All I'm going to tell you, pal, is like, I, I know, I know that hatred like this makes you feel strong. I know that it makes you feel like a big guy. I know that it makes you feel like you're in a group of people who are smarter than everybody else and are in on this who secret. Who is this guy? And we're the Christians. We're the last Christians on earth. And you're afraid. You're afraid to let it go. But this wasn't just the Daily Wire denouncing far-right factions because they disagree with them. The Daily Wire was founded by now CEO mm -hmm. Jeremy Boring mm -hmm. and now lead editor and the person with the most popular commentator show on the platform, Ben Shapiro. The alt-right was a new group of conservatives led by Richard Spencer that was meant to separate from the boomers version of conservatism, a populist conservatism for younger generations. The alt-right isn't just a movement, but an idea for a better future where people who look like you and think like you can mm -hmm. prosper. It consists of many subgroups and organizations like American Renaissance, America First, and many leaders like Jared Taylor and Nick Fuentes. Mm. Each group with their own goals and ideas. America. Some are atheists and some are Christians. Some are. What is the, what is, um, I saw a meme. <laughs> I saw a meme of like, interracial marriage will cure racism. And then it showed Sneeko and Fuentes. And I was like, rip. <laughs> nationalist socialists while <laughs> others believe in capitalism. But there are a number of things that they all agree on that brings them together. Diversity is ruining America, white people should be the majority, and Jewish people are the ones who are stopping them from being able to achieve- Sorry, I also love the political bubble where the progressives call Jews white and then the white nationalists call Jews non-whites. That's my favorite. My, my, I'm not gonna lie. I try to stay away from racist bubbles or bubbles that are focused on race. It just gives me an anxiety, like it gives me so much anxiety and it just feels like- I don't know. The way they do things is so stupid. Like literally the progressives are fighting that Jews are white. And so they don't matter because they're killing Palestinians. And then the, the white nationalists in America are like, we have to get rid of the Jews because they're not white. And I'm just so confused on on why, okay, whatever, you do you, but girl, ma'am. And Ben Shapiro, the face of the biggest conservative <laughs> independent media organization was definitely Jewish. The white nationalists, they're responsible for a lot of bad things. They're evil. They, talk, they don't like people like me with my funny little hat and my Judaism and everything. Ben was one of the biggest targets of harassment by the alt-right. Mm. Not only was he Jewish, but he represented the old conservatism of the neocons. The George Bush Republican that needed to get out of the way for newer, younger generations. The alt-right were big fans of Trump and his immigration policies helping him get elected in 2016. They're controlled fully by the lobbyists, by the donors, and by the special interests fully. The mostly online group didn't get very much national attention and continued to quietly grow through YouTubers like Gavin McGinnis, Lauren Southern, and Stefan Molyneux until 2017. Yo, yo, it's the dark triad right there, baby. When they had their biggest gathering yet, over 4,000 white nationalists from all over the world gathered in Charlottesville, Virginia for their Unite the Right rally when a man got in his car and drove into a crowd killing one woman Ugh. and injuring dozens more. It was mm. considered another terrorist attack among many from the far right and got mainstream coverage from all the biggest media outlets. Mm -hmm. And with breaking news from Charlottesville, Virginia. Some of this is gonna be disturbing. The images show this car speeding forward to plow right into the pedestrians, then backing up, hitting more people and speeding away. <laughs> And you had some very bad people in that group. But you also had people that were very fine people on both sides. You had people in that group, excuse me, excuse me, I saw the same pictures as you did. Causing all the well-known leaders to be denounced and then banned from all major social media platforms after. The alt-right was losing its ability to reach younger men and slowly dying out. Meanwhile, Ben Shapiro and The Daily Wire were continuing to grow. They started to sign all the major conservative YouTube players onto their catalog of right-wing podcasts. They kept the older <laughs> ideas of conservatism. While Trump was elected, Daily Wire- What do they say? What do they say? This is like a nightmare a blood rotation. <laughs> Our hosts mostly opposed him as the best candidate, but still preferred him over any of the Democratic candidates. Just as the left was dividing over populist versus Ooh. establishment leaders, the mm. conservative movement was no different. And the Daily Wire definitely sat on the establishment side. Populism is founded on the idea that there is a group of elites that work against the needs of the people. 
For the left, this is mostly an economic issue. Businesses are using money in politics to make sure people can't get things like fair wages and free healthcare. While for the right, it's a social issue. Elites are brainwashing our kids with ideas about transgenderism and trying to overrun the country with immigrants. But both sides employ the same tactics. They need a bad guy who is at the root of all your problems. Now you just need a hero, a politician who isn't part of the establishment. The establishment is seen as a group of old career politicians who are gatekeeping all the power with bribes and blackmail because the elites are paying them. Now, one great man who doesn't cower to money or threats can arise to drain the swamp. He can point at all the mainstream media organizations and trusted institutions as people who are paid to help the establishment and report only the information given to them by the elites. So you can't trust or believe anything that they say. Now there's no one else you can trust but your hero. Populism isn't about who is right or wrong. It's about who is good and who is evil. And you have to pick a side. They'll employ rhetorical tricks that aren't wise, but don't really represent the truth. Mm -hmm. Conspiracy theories about Ooh. big tech, big pharma, and big business make it easy to blame all the people's problems on the ones in charge. The hero never has to prove their theories. They just need you to question the authority. Anytime they're called out for being wrong, it's the elites trying to fight back by lying and slandering them. This is team. Yo, people love to blame it someone else. Thank you, Rashad, says Brittany got the rhythm for real. <laughs> Thank you. You know, no, but for real, like people always be blaming somebody else. It's the conspiracy theorists, it's the Jews, it's them, it's them, it's them. It's like, maybe, maybe it's you. Maybe it's you. Like the Nick Fuentes, 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 Fuentes. You're not even going to change your name? You're not even going to change it to something a little bit more white? Like you're not even going to change your name, Fuentes? That's wild. Team sports. Are you going to help the good guys? Or the bad guys. You're oppressed. You're a victim. You could do so much more. But first, you need to stop those who are holding you down. Populism is about the people fighting back against the powerful to get what is rightfully owed to them and break the system that's oppressed them for so long in the process. So as the right wing becomes more and more populist, they also become more and more susceptible to more and more conspiracies. Yo, I really, I really love the editing that employ the same tactics of fear mongering illogical thinking and victimhood thank you for the super chat by 2022 the alt-right was no longer a movement all the groups split up and stopped working together attempting mm. to build their own movements but failing at it as their followers can i say i thought the world was so divided when blm first started and michael brown happened and all of that stuff i was like wow we're very divided but now we are much more divided don't get me wrong um, it's clear that there's a lot of division. It's always been that way. It's always been it, but it's just like a specifically, like, it's very more individualistic, actually coincided with that video essay we watched yesterday, right? Where it's, it's more isolated, almost down to the individual, how isol how like separated and, and isolated you can be from another person's perspective. It's kind of, it is surreal almost coming from a person who came from simple politics, like in 2000, 2000s politics, simple. Like early 2000s, like 2001, like 2012 election, simple, just so much more simple. It's got older. They aged out of their activism days and got jobs, families, and had bills to pay. Their leaders were all blacklisted and banned, losing their abilities to recruit newer, younger minds that would take up the man. Wait, Ingrid says, honestly, it makes sense for a half Mexican Catholic to be conservative. Oh, no, super common. But to be racist? Not common. How many racist Mexicans do you meet who like white people? Like specifically, he's doing the whole like Christian white or Christian nationalist community. But like it's kind of like whiteness he's focused on. That's what's weird about Fuentes. A lot of Mexicans are Catholics or Christians or conservatives. But also a lot of them vote Democrat. But more than that, it's that Fuentes is like he wants whiteness to be a focus. I think he guises it under Christianity, though, but I'm not sure. I haven't deep dived into Fuentes. I just know he's a shit person. No offense. ...and continue the fight. Their reliance on platforms like YouTube and Twitter made them lose their ability to communicate with anyone as they died out. All except one, Nick Fuentes. Probably the youngest of all the alt-right leaders, he built his own platform, Cozy TV, where he and That's his crazy. generals could stream speeches to their live audiences and keep the movement alive. 
What people if are saying. If Jews say I'm not allowed to be mad about it, I'm mad about it all of a sudden. They were able to continue recruiting high school and college aged kids who would replace the old guys aging out. Nick was hosting his own show called the America First Podcast, deeming his movement the America First Movement, a Christian nationalist group that put God in Christ at the front of their movement and appealed to Gen Z. They separated themselves from the rest of the alt right, calling them wake. Jesus was Palestinian, bro. Jesus was Jewish. He was a Jewish Palestinian. I feel like that's kind of... Wait. Um, wait, I think... Oh, wait, that would make sense. Wait, is Nick Fuentes on the side of Palestine? Or is he on the side of Israel? <gasps> Could he... I'm confused. Rashad said, scary thing about Nick is that he's actually funny as fuck. You know, the most... the Charisma. It's not their politics. It's their charisma. I think Fuentes has charisma. Andrew Tate has charisma. And it's th their politics are shit. Their views are shit. It's their charisma, though. Charisma gets you so far. Charisma is like pretty privilege. Oh, my God. If you have charisma, that's it. That's all you need, baby. Trump, he has Kanye. They got that weird charisma people like. Not everybody, obviously, but, mm, you know, kind of interesting. Wignats. Wignat is a derogatory term for white nationalists who aren't smart about their rhetoric and appearance. They say the quiet parts out loud instead of using dog whistles. They're skinheads who talk about ethnostates and hating the Jews. Nick instead wanted his political movement to appear to be about getting Christianity into politics from mm -hmm. the outside, but for everyone on the inside to know the truth. Ben Shapiro and his group of Daily Wire podcast hosts were going around the country giving speeches at colleges. At the end of every speech, they would give the audience a chance to come up to a mic and ask a question, creating viral Ben Destroys clips. I'm saying that the Boy Scouts have a standard. You must Do you guys remember? Ben Shapiro destroys lib. Ben Shapiro. Oh, I hated this era. I was like, why do we all have to be destroying each other? Shouldn't we be building bridges? No. Burn the bridges. This is so funny. Be a biological boy to be a Boy Scout. You have to be a boy to be a Boy Scout. In the name Boy Scouts. Nick was very outspokenly against Ben and the Daily Wire, so he encouraged his followers to go to college campuses. And I'm sorry, when is Ben Shapiro going to come out as autistic? When is he going to join the club? Because I think he should be a part of it, and I think we would all welcome him with open arms. When is he going to join the club? I'm waiting. That's going to be the day. I'm ask waiting. hosts why they don't support real Christian policies, like outlawing gay marriage, or why they allow immigration if they are America first. Recently you gave a speech at Stanford about Nick Fuentes, who you called an alt-right lead influencer. My question is this, it seems like conservatives like you, like Charlie Kirk, like Dan Crenshaw, feel threatened by America First conservatives and America First ideas. Is this why you're smearing them as alt-right, racist, homophobic, and all these other things, instead of actually addressing their ideas and debating them? So first of all, I'm happy to address any ideas. I'm not happy to debate somebody who has joked about murdering me. That's, that's Fuentes. Uh, as, far as, as far as some of the other... The America Firsters started following around every major conservative pundit, yelling at them and saying they weren't real Christians. This was deemed the Groiper Wars. Ugh. Clippable moments of kids trolling the fake conservatives helping grow the movement. From then on, Nick Fuentes' followers were called Groipers. They continued to gather in large groups to combat mainstream conservatives, BLM, and Antifa. Nick even ended up following Ben Shapiro and his family while out in public and taunting them. Ew. Gross. Wow. Well, that's that's our free speech warrior, everybody. Isn't Ben popular enough to have security? He better have it now. I feel like he needs it now. Champion of the battle of ideas. Yeah. When Nick and his Groipers went to CPAC, the largest conservative conference in America with all the most influential pundits, activists, and politicians on the right, Nick got banned. Mm -hmm. So Nick started his own conference called AFPAC, the white nationalist alternative to CPAC. Oof. Even getting some well-known politicians to come speak, though some claimed they didn't know who Nick was beforehand and denounced him later. He was a black sheep that no one would touch with a 10-foot pole. Even conservatives- Look, you know, <clears throat> 
people are so desperate sometimes just to be invited and to be like a part of the group. I do wonder, and I'm trying to even for myself be more diligent. It's hard because you always want to build bridges with like well-intentioned people. But Nick Fuentes is like, I don't think he's well-intentioned at all. And I remember, oh my God, I remember my dumbass a few years ago was like, who cares about Nick Fuentes? No one's going to take him seriously. And then you all went and took him seriously. I really underestimate, and I've really got to stop doing this. This is my, this is my bubble. This is my fault. I always think people aren't that stupid. <laughs> and then I forget, oh, they, okay, even the most well-intentioned people that I, my dumb ass was thinking Nick Fuentes would never get more popular than YouTube. And all of a sudden, he was meeting Donald Trump. And I was like, what the fuck just happened? What the fuck just happened? Who might be a bit more sympathetic to his oh. cause didn't want to muddy their reputations by being seen with Nick. And while Nick was outcast and stuck in his echo chamber, the idea of optics that separated him from the Wignats mm -hmm. slowly dwindled away. His anti-Jewish rhetoric got more and more extreme. He was much more open with racial slurs, misogyny, and anti-Semitism as he spoke to his young audience on his secluded live stream surrounded by like-minded children. I can see the conservative movement is slowly coming back around to its implicit racism of the old of the old days. You know, like I remember when Obama was president, there definitely was some thinly veiled you know, racism there. All content creators knew not to associate with Nick or give him a platform. Don't give him the ability to gain an audience again. Not because he's so clearly correct, but because he's not so clearly deceptive. While fitting the definition of white nationalism, anti-Semite, and misogynist to a T, he refutes those labels. He claims <laughs> activists and Jews are always changing the meaning of the words, only to tar- Ma'am, activists and Jews? You see how you sing, sing, singled out the Jew part? <laughs> I'm not a I'm not an anti-Semite. The Jews did it. <laughs> Nick Fuentes. <laughs> what the girl? <laughs> Target victims like him, when in reality, these are fairly Ooh. new words in history and are continuously changing to fit the times. When people say those words, he is the conceptual embodiment for what it is people are oh. attempting to communicate. The Daily Wire continued to eat up the conservative landscape, adding Jordan Peterson, Brett Cooper, and PragerU to their catalog, becoming a conservative podcast superpower. They had all the biggest names in the game, but then they signed Candace Owens, who was also a big name, but was never capable of arguing her ideas in a coherent manner. I remember thinking this was out of character for the Daily Wire at the time. Mm. Candace wasn't a serious thought leader. She was mainly just a provocateur. Everyone at the Daily Wire is provocative sometimes. But they are also lawyers and writers. There's a substance to their Ugh. shows. They dig into- The Daily Wire feels like when your boomer parents still think they're cool, bro. Philosophy, legal theory, theology, and political science. Candace is a tabloid for conservatives. Right now, God, I'll address it right now. Lives, I love it. I love it. Up on it. But they also hired Brett Cooper to do pop culture. So maybe it's not all that out of character. Candace's first appearance in the limelight was when she sued her high school for racial discrimination with the help of the NAACP, only to later say she was forced to do it by her elders. To call somebody okay. the aggressor. So how do you describe it? That you experienced a hate I crime? I experienced something that was labeled a hate crime. I, w I wouldn't even call it a hate crime. I think we live in a label-obsessed culture, and before we seek to understand what happened, we seek... Labels are frustrating. I mean, what even is a woman? To like put in a box yeah she then created an anti-bullying website during gamergate that was meant to dox young bullies on the internet it was widely denounced by both sides of the fight as a horrendous idea website Where? anytime you public people's personal information it is doxing. It's not personal information why not because it was public because it was on facebook it, it that's still the definition of doxing if you share someone else's no it's not if you share someone no it's not you can't you, change the definition of doxing hold if on, you i actually have the definition right here Good. later candace was seen in congressional and house judicial yo i kind of get I get like, oh, I'm trying to be nice. Oh, see, hmm. Candace Owens feels like she has a limited relationship with empathy, and empathy is a tool. I get the impression that Candace Owens doesn't make an effort to learn how to use that tool. 
And because of that, she comes across. The way she does. Judiciary Committee hearings getting into fights with other guest speakers and congressmen and claiming racism doesn't exist from white people, but from black one people. Of these manifestos. Now, you're, of course, not responsible for the words of somebody writing that document. But I do think that laughing at it is a real problem. You didn't say it doesn't matter about the subject matter of today's hearing. You said there are other subjects that matter as well, and maybe we should spend some time on those. Is that accurate? That is correct, and they matter much, 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 much more. And I have said that. I said that in my opening, and I will say it again. You know that white supremacy and white nationalism is nowhere near, ranks nowhere near the top of the issues that are facing black America. There, a clip is played of Candace, Hitler. where she claims Hitler would have been fine if he had just stayed in his own country. <laughs> I agree. I, I actually don't have any problems at all uh, with the word nationalism. I think that it gets, uh, the definition gets poisoned Ooh, um, mad. by uh, leaders that actually want globalism. Globalism is what I, what I don't want. So when you think about whenever we say nationalism, the first thing people think about, in, at least in America, is Hitler. You know, he was a national socialist. But if Hitler just wanted to make Germany great and have things run well, okay, fine. The problem is, is that he wanted, he had dreams outside of Germany. He wanted to globalize. He wanted everybody to be German, everybody to be speaking German. This was replayed by Media Matters and tons of other left-wing outlets, as though Candace was denying the Holocaust was bad. Happy Monday. Hitler was just trying to make Germany great again. And Candace Owens is okay with that. Now, I'd like to sympathize with Candace here for a moment. She's simply a victim of her own early success with a bottomless pit of money backing her every step of the way. Endlessly. Yeah, I really just like Hassan as a streamer. I don't even watch Hassan. You know, I've seen a couple of videos. I've tried to watch like... A few videos here and there. Um, not exactly my vibe, but you know, sometimes I jump into the bubble. But this pre recorded setup, I actually do prefer him on stream. I think I just prefer the vibe more than this particular setup, but yeah, funny. Huh. Supporting her whenever she has nuclear takes like Hitler's nationalism wasn't bad, actually. She's certainly defending Hitler. She was asked about mm. nationalism. I like David Pakman. He seems like a nice person. I just saw him on the Ice Coffee Hour in Western politics, and she brings up Adolf Hitler and how his real wrong step was becoming a global. I mean, if he wanted to just slaughter Jewish people in Germany, it'd be totally fine. But the problem is he wanted to go global. You know what I'm saying? He didn't want to keep, Anna. keep it within his borders. That was the real problem. She was hired by Charlie Kirk in turn. Ugh. Charlie Kirk is the worst of them. He's so, ugh. Point USA to go around to college campuses and argue with students, claiming feminism was oppressing women. Democrats. True. P.S. on Brett Cooper. I do think she's like obviously what I would call like an industry plant, but that's not the right word. She is an actress. I do think she's just spewing off talking points. I wonder if it's going to eat her up one day. I do. I, after she like defended Andrew Huberman's actions and titled her video, like I think I like him better after this, I was like, girl. I don't know how much they're paying you, girl, but it cannot be worth your soul. I like I'm not going to check in with Brett Cooper for a while. It feels like she's gross to me where it's like I she feels like such a sellout. And I figure she's I mean, it's a fake room. It's a fake studio. They're trying to paint her off as being like a girl in her bedroom. All of it is fake. So I assume like she figures like I'm going to make as much money right now. But like I just feel like in 10 years she's going to come out and tell an like an, have a tell all about Ben Shapiro and all these people. And she probably won't have dirt on Ben Shapiro directly because he's probably like fine, honestly. But she's probably going to have um, like commentary on the space in general because there's girl, they better be paying you so much money, girl, for the bullshit opinions you have to pretend to have. I mean, I assume you're pretending to have them just because they're so brain dead. But at the same time, she just doesn't, she feels like an actress. It just feels too fake to me. It could be her real, her real thoughts though. Maybe, but she, see, doesn't she feel different? Like, doesn't she feel like a totally, like a real actress versus like like uh, Lauren Southern and all these other people? Like, they're not acting, but, you know, they're just shit people. But like, Brett Cooper is like, feels like a actress. I don't know how to explain it. I'm telling you. That's where oppressing black people and the left is oppressing <sighs> white people. All scenarios where she is claiming victimhood for one group and oppression for another, and in each instance, wildly reversing what the consensus and experts would say. Candace eventually started what she called Blexit, an ode to the British exit of the European Union named Brexit. 
<gasps> likes it. Let's push. Ooh, Rashad thinks bread is genuine. Okay, let's see. That's interesting. Mm, we'll see what to see. She sounds like I did uh, when I first got into politics at 16. Yeah, she sounds different than I did when I was a conservative. She feels much faker to me, but uh, we'll see. Cause like I was really in it, bro. I was like a full on Republican conservative, bro. But maybe, maybe she's like a Gen Z. Maybe you relate to her more because you're both Gen Z versus I'm like an older, like mid millennial, mid millennial. So okay, okay. Mm. Pushing for a black exit of the Democratic Party, mm. what she referred to as the Democratic plantation. The idea is that Democrats convince black people that they are oppressed and that Democrats are the only ones who can help them. That's what keeps black voters voting for leftist policies in every election. But Democrats aren't actually going to enact policies that will improve their lives because then black people wouldn't need them anymore. She felt as though Trump would improve their lives if they would just vote for him. In Yui says, would you feel like she, uh, would you say she feels like a smoke screen? You know, when you see like Jordan Peterson speak, you know, he's speaking from the heart because he's a fucking mess. You know, when you see like, Ben Shapiro speak, you can see where his values are so clearly. I just don't get Brett Cooper. Like, I don't get where she's informed from. I can't tell if she's very shallow in the way she thinks or she's actually really deep. I can't tell. But, you know, she's really young, so I get it. You know what I mean? She feels too scripted. I know her office is fake. Like, I know her background is fake. You know what I mean? So we'll give her time to figure it out for sure. Um, I don't know which part of her is real though. I can't tell. Like at least with, I can tell Jordan Peterson real. He's real. He's literally crying. Like I can tell people are real. They're literally not following a script. If anything, they should follow more of a script sometimes. It feels like she's all script and know her and I can't tell the difference personally, but obviously can't wait to see what she does in five to 10 years. 2018, Kanye West tweeted that he loved the way Candace Owens thinks. Kanye was in a spiral doing and saying out of character things like wearing a MAGA hat and meeting with Donald. I want to say just like I, the reason I stay away from race conversations, especially now, is just because one, um, you know, what is gender, let alone race. But also it's about perception, how people see you. But also more than that, it's hard to be a middle person. I have a podcast about this, but it is hard to be a middle person. You're not black enough. You're not white enough. You're not Assyrian enough. You're not cultured enough. You're not in the culture, but you're of the culture. You should be more in the culture. You're not welcome in the culture. You don't speak the language. You don't need blah, 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 blah. It's too complicated. You know, out of all the bubbles to join, the race one is difficult unless you really feel a part of it. And so it's kind of difficult to like make that your main label. Like if you're going to choose a main label, I'd rather join the queer bubble. I'd rather join a religious bubble. I'd rather join a different bubble. But when it comes to the race bubble, like unless you are clearly like of the culture, it's too unsafe to be a middle person. Like did you see Candace Owens' baby shower? It was like all white women. And then her, she – Candace Owens can't show up to the barbecue. I'm, she won't fit in, even though she's black, because it's a different kind of bubble. You know, not all black people are a monolith, obviously, but that's why Candace Owens feels so anti-black, because she has anti-black narratives. And it's, like, interesting. And again, even when we say anti-black, we're speaking about a monolithic concept around black culture, which is a specific bubble. Not all Americans who are black are having the same experience. But, like, when we talk about those middle people, or those people that don't quite feel, like, a part of the community, even me, like, people always try to, like, discredit me somehow. Like, they'll say, like, oh, Brittany thinks she's, like, Middle Eastern, or Brittany thinks she's a Syrian, or Brittany thinks, like, she's something. Or, like, Brittany's just a white girl. Okay, for sure, bro. But also, but then my like Arab friends are like, hey, like you should need to talk about Palestine. And then my Israel friends are like, hey, like, are you going to talk about Israel? And I'm like, oh my God. And it's like, it's too much pressure for a person who's not integrated into any of these bubbles too much when it comes to race, you know? But it is what it is. Rashad says, I think Candace aspires for white acceptance 1,000. Well, I do kind of, to be honest with you, if you're an alienated minority like uh, Blair White or Candace Owens, the best place to go is into the conservative bubble because they will tokenize you and raise you to the top. They tried to do that to me in talk radio, and I could have had a great career being the token conservative lesbian, but I just couldn't do the script. I couldn't play to the bubble. I couldn't do it. It was too hard. It was too difficult to like fake it and lie to people, and I just didn't want to do it. So I was like, nah, I'm good, bro. But yeah, they told me they told me that they're like, if you want a radio show, if you want to make things work for you, you just got to play the script. And I'm like, I, I'm not going to do that. It doesn't matter how much you pay me. I'd rather just I'm going to do my own thing. And here I am 
all these years later. Guys, like the stream. Like the stream. That's what I'm saying. I wonder how much they're paying Brett Cooper because it must be a lot. You would have to, girl, no amount of money for me personally, but dude. Donald Trump. Candace followed Kanye onto TMZ where they argued that being a slave was a choice and a mindset before going on off topic tangents. Walking off the set to argue with reporters and getting Candace in on the debate. It represent that. It represents something different. So for me to wear that hat means I, I want to make America uh, great in my own in my own way. And I was addicted exactly. to opioids too. In your own way. Don't we all? Two days I got off of opioids, I'm, I'm in the hospital, right? I'm taking two, hey, everyone listen to this, please. Two days before I was in the hospital, I was on opioids. This reality has been forced upon us. It is a choice. Just like when I said slavery is a choice. The reality, we can make our own reality. We can- What if Kanye's in spiritual psychosis? In a good way. Obviously, if you're new to my audience, I mean to say, what if somebody is like this to explain their action to help them better, not to make fun of them or make it worse? So what if Kanye is going through spiritual psychosis? I know he's bipolar, so he's going to have his mania or whatever. But what if it's also a mixture of that? You know what I'm saying? Like, it's kind of interesting. Maybe he f feels like he's having that, you know, I don't know. God. Talk about history, but not too long. We need to talk about our now because we can fix and start loving each other now. I say we have no enemies. We don't have enemies. Black people have a tendency to focus and march when a white person kills a black person or wears a hat. But when it's 700 kids being killed in Chicago, it's okay. It's okay for blacks to kill blacks. But if it's a white uh, thing. I don't know why you're saying that's okay. That's the, wait, 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 There's wait, been stop, more focus stop, stop. and more marches. That is a lie. About yo, don't believe that. Whites killing blacks. There, wait, wait, wait. Then kids in Chicago wait, 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 killing each other. That's a lie. There are black people working. There are no, no marches. Over ninety percent of black people getting killed are killed by other blacks. No, that's, that's, a, lie. Lie. that's, black. Black. No, that's a fact. The black but homicide there, no, is a fact. That is a fact. Black but there, black crime is a fact. But there are black people. Okay, wait a second. Now this is a problem. We have to. You're you're too far. You have to be closer to me. I'm, I'm here right now. There are black no, people working it, every brother, single brother, day. Brother, don't scream come because back. it yeah. will make us look yeah. crazy. I don't okay, care Candace. how we look in front of this. Candace. You talk us a come on over. No, no, when you, when you like, scream, this is what I'm saying. when you no, scream no, and no. you don't talk, it okay. doesn't okay. look. Okay. Right. Let me just say but, something. Well, let, let me impart this upon you. Okay, this is a perfect example of what I'm talking about because these are two different versions of somebody else's truth. This is two different versions of somebody else's truth. So he gets up and he's talking slavery, right? Okay, I don't, I'm not enslaved. So that it's like, I don't mean to insult his reality. Kanye, come on over. I don't. Mean I just want to give him a hug. <laughs> <laughs> right, right. Like I don't no, mean to. No, no. I think I think he might want to punch me, but I want to give him a hug. Ben Shapiro's slogan has Ooh. always been "Facts don't care about your feelings." These are facts, and facts don't care about your feelings. He uses facts that may be inconvenient and attaches them to his values to come to logical conclusions within his ideology. And this wasn't just something Ben said, but more of a mantra for the culture at the Daily Wire. They enjoyed debates where they argued facts from a conservative perspective, but that was never Candace. She was never one to care about facts that attached to her values, but instead facts that backed up the conclusions she had already started with, one that would appease those around her. She would divert debates from lines of logic to argue who is more of a victim. She'd rather engage in oppression Olympics than the marketplace of ideas. She consistently got into drama with other conservatives while podcasting with PragerU, and that carried over to the Daily Wire. Candace and Ben always had a contentious relationship, even before she was with the Daily Wire. So I need to ask you about the Kanye issue. So uh, famously, we had a little bit of a tete-a-tete -tete on, on Twitter yeah. uh, when, uh, when Kanye came out and he was uh, supporting President Ooh. I didn't know they had a little TT. I didn't know. Guys, T emoji in the chat. I didn't know they had a little TT. Oh, Tom Foolery with the research. I don't know why I missed this whole arc. Honestly, I think, what was I doing? Political psychosis. Alice, stop. You're so funny. This is so interesting. How did I miss this era? What was I doing during this time? I don't know. I think I was focusing probably... I don't know what I was doing. More philosophy stuff, I guess. Well, I definitely moved out of politics a while ago, so I wasn't paying attention. But <clears throat> this um, Ben Shapiro, Candace Owens thing, I didn't know they had a contentious uh, relationship already.
President Trump, and I said, live by the Kanye, die by the Kanye, which yeah. is mainly me saying, you know, Kanye takes a lot of positions on a lot of different issues. Uh, and you got a little bit upset about that, it seemed. And they continued to fight publicly while working together. Ooh. In 2022, Kanye West tweeted out, I'm going to go Death Con 3 on Jewish people, getting tons of backlash from both the left and the right. But Candace defended him, claiming he meant something very different, hmm. but then defended his claims by saying, He's just asking questions. Denise, Damn. she was in my wedding, I, like I was shirt. in her wedding. We're very close, we've been friends our entire lives. And Denise happens to be Jewish. Oh wow, did I just say that a Jewish person in my life was cheap? Well, clearly that is anti-Semitic because what? it wasn't problematic, of course, a few paces ago when I said my husband, who was a devout Catholic, is cheap. It wasn't problematic when I said Savannah, who is a Protestant, is cheap, but God forbid, God forbid you say that a Jewish person is cheap, even if it's factually true, the entire world implodes. My first instinct was to go, what did he actually say, right? It wasn't to go, oh my gosh, Kanye West hates Jewish people. I know that's not true, obviously, because I'm friends with him and I am friends with his Jewish friends. You have a right to ask questions and you have a right to question someone's motive, irrespective of their race, their gender, their background, Certainly their religion, I don't care. I don't care if you pray on the rosary. I don't care if you have a Star of David around your neck. If I have a criticism that I would like to launch about you or that- I just feel like cheapness is a very interesting insult to throw at someone. Somebody is cheap. Yeah, I don't, I think I would be so, see, oh, ooh, this is the question. I'm socially aware enough to know that, well, first of all, calling anyone cheap is going to piss them off, but also using cheap in regards to a certain ethnic, ethnic background or group can come off way worse because there's that connotation, right? You don't want a dog whistle. But also, I think she has to worry about this more probably because so much of her audience could be racist, right? Like, I think that's probably more of the issue than anything else is like genuinely, one of the reasons you wouldn't want to hang out with conservatives is because the, they just have a higher probability to be racist. But I will say this, in Republican bubbles, a lot of them think Democrats are very racist, which Candace Owens referenced earlier, right? Like the Democrat party is actually more racist. It's like, it feels more of an eyebrow raise coming from a certain group because you're not sure, like, is this a dog whistle? Or are you just saying it as a fact? Because they could be cheap, but also, and that's the reputation you have if you're in that particular bubble, right? Or maybe it's the way you're perceived by other bubbles. Mm. I would like to say, I'm going to say it. If you are an honest person, oh, you did not think this tweet was anti-Semitic. You did not think that he wrote this tweet because he hates or wants to genocide Jewish people. This does not represent the beginning of the Holocaust. That's if you're an honest person, you'll meet that. You, you will admit that. What is Death Con 3? Did he mean Def Con 3? Which would be a military defense position, not an offense for those of you that are offended a military defense position. He can't believe that he's not free to talk about people in his life who happen to be Jewish, right? If you're a liar, you'll say, I know I was scared, Candace. I actually thought that Kanye West was going to launch a military strike. Wait, wait, wait. Kanye West, is he Jewish is a good question or anti-Jewish. I think Kanye West is a conspiracy theorist and I think conspiracy theorists this is my, okay, I don't like conspiracy theorist bubbles. They give me a lot of anxiety because they feel so unhinged. But here's my theory about conspiracy theory bubbles. I don't know if they have the ability to like actually access like racism and homophobia and stuff in the same way regular people do. That's the irony. Guys, conspiracy theorists like Kanye, they're kind of unhinged or like unwell or mentally ill in some capacity, which my heart goes out to them. That's such a struggle. I really do think conspiracy theory the correlation between conspiracy theory and psychosis is probably pretty prevalent. But more than that, think about all the people who aren't conspiracy theorists who are just racist. Like think about all the quote regular people or all your government like people who are misogynistic and racist and homophobic and transphobic. And they're not even conspiracy theorists. And again, when I say conspiracy theorist, I mean somebody who's unhinged in a reality and believes things are true to the point where they're like wearing tinfoil hats and alienating themselves from the government and trying to hide their taxes. But not hide their taxes like a billionaire who's not trying to pay tax, but like a conspiracy theorist who thinks they're going to escape the government, right? See how like the actions are the same, but the meaning is different? I don't know if conspiracy theorists who are mentally ill 
are able to access their racism because they're so paranoid over things that are so delusional. I actually think them being racist might make them more like reasonable because reasonable people every day are racist. The world is a racist place, homophobic and misogynistic. And we elect those people into office. We give them like the keys to the office every day. So that that either means the whole world is kind of insane, which is an argument you can make, or that something in conspiracy theory people's minds, they're so overblown. I don't even know if they care about race or if they care about powers. Do they think Jewish people have magical powers? Which is ironic because Jewish people also think they have access to magical powers, but in a different way. I don't know. I think, I don't believe what any of these people believe. So it's very strange for me to see them all arguing. And I do think Candace Owens is a bad person. I, I think she's a bad person in the sense that I don't even think she does good. I don't think she has a moral compass. You know what I mean? Maiden says, I don't think Kanye is racist. I think he's highly neurotic and incredibly smart. And that's an uncomfortable combination for others. Yeah, but he's wrong so much. Like he's, un he feels very unsafe to me. Like I definitely wouldn't feel safe around Kanye. But at the same time, like it would be, like I just think he's really sick. Like I would like to get him some stability, right? But I don't think he's like necessarily evil. I mean, what's evil? But I think he's very far from his joy. Like, I think he's very far from his joy. Yeah, I think, yeah, I agree, Biza. I think Candace is calculated. I think Candace Owens is so calculated. She makes me feel like she would judge a baby for what it was wearing. Or maybe even like 4D chess, you like out of a job before you were even born. You know what I mean? Israel. Now, once again, I want to make this very clear. This is not a defense of his tweet. This is an open question, which never seems to happen anymore. It's like you cannot even say the word Jewish without people getting upset in the same way that you're not allowed to say black anymore. You're Hispanic, you're racist, you're sexist, you're misogynist. And that's all I have to say about that. That's all I have to say about that. <laughs> <laughs> Kanye went on to say more and more anti-Semitic things, and Yo, Candace continued good. to defend him. Each time she got any heat, she would just say the backlash was for refusing to participate in cancel culture. But instead, it was for defending anti-Semitic remarks and saying anti-Semitic things herself. She refused to actually engage with criticisms of her and continued to try to convince her audience that this was all just a left-wing tactic to silence her free speech. Or did what aboutisms pointing at what the left allows people to say without getting canceled. This was the first time I ever actually thought Candace might be anti-Semitic. She hyperbolizes the accusations against Kanye instead of arguing why they're wrong. Like saying his comments don't represent the beginning of a holocaust. Or that he wasn't going to launch a military strike in Israel. Absolutely nobody thought either one of those things were Great happening. Great point, Tom. Great point. Anti-Semites are really good at recognizing patterns when they want to, but then discounting them when convenient. Mm -hmm. They'll point to a bunch of things that are actually true. Jewish people are disproportionately in positions of power and influence in America. They disproportionately own top finance companies. They disproportionately own major media companies. They are disproportionately lawyers, doctors, and CEOs. According to Pew Research, about 35% of Forbes' top 400 billionaires are Jewish, while only being about 2% of the United States. Usually, the reason for pointing this out is to imply that there's a Jewish cabal, controlling the world, pushing for globalism and world domination. Mm. They think these stats prove the theory. But well, hold on. Let's talk about smartness for a second. Conor says, I get Kanye makes good music and clothes, but like, does that equal smart or is that something else? Um, it depends on how we define intelligence. Kanye is obviously very smart. Candace Owens is obviously very smart. Ben Shapiro is obviously very smart. Jordan Peterson is very smart. Smart is intelligence. What you do with that intelligence is between you and your God. Like intelligence does not equate action. So if you say like, oh, well, smart people do smart people things. I don't know that. I've never seen that. The smarter you are, I swear, the dumber your decisions. Dr. K and Jordan Peterson have talked about this, how high, the higher your IQ, the more disabled you almost become, right? Because it's like, it's almost, a, it's a form of neurodivergency in some bubbles. So again, I don't think high IQ or being smart means you make good decisions. I think that correlation is like a language barrier. I think in language, like we'll say, oh, like he's so dumb, he made a bad decision. Oh, she's so smart, she must have made, a, or she's made a good decision, she's so smart. But I actually don't think intelligence equals good decision making. I actually think introspection equals 
or and extrospection equals better decision making, which is why I don't equate introspection, extrospection with intelligence, because I see very intelligent people who are lacking in introspection, extrospection make a lot of dumb decisions. You know what I mean? But they never have evidence of any of these people working together or planning. They think the numbers are enough proof by themselves. It's just simple pattern recognition, they say. Candace defends Kanye by giving- Oh, hold on. Maiden says, I think he is intelligent. That doesn't mean he gets it right all the time. I don't think it's fair to write him off as crazy. I don't mean crazy in, in like a, 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 a judgmental way. I mean, I think he's mentally ill and my heart goes out to him. I see a suffering human being who is mentally ill and I think he is absolutely- in in dire need of some grounding. I don't think I don't think I don't I don't mean to call Kanye crazy like as an insult. I mean it as my heart goes out to him. He's like he's kind of crazy right now. And he needs a lot of like help and grounding, right? So that's what I mean with that, right? Big D says, Brittany, are there any conspiracy theories you've looked into or agreed with? No, I don't like conspiracy theories. They give me insane amounts of anxiety. Every time I, time I try to look into that bubble or meet people who are in them, they all freak me out as crazy. They all come off as incredibly crazy, like no grounding, right? So again, I'm not talking about crazy as in an insult. I mean, literally needs help, right? Like needs help, right? And it might just be a trigger or something. Just Joseph's is inspiration. In in introspection, emotional intelligence. It's both. You need to have both to be introspective, extrospective. If you're just, if you just have EQ and no IQ, what? If you only have EQ or IQ, no EQ, it's like, what? You need both to have symbiosis, right? You need to have both. Joe says, isn't there all kinds of different uh, types of intelligence? Well, it depends on how nuanced you want to have the conversation. But of course, like ultimately, right? An example saying that just because she called her friend, who happens to be Jewish, cheap, this mm. doesn't make the comment anti-Semitic. And this is true. But if you build a pattern of calling people who just happen to be Jewish, cheap, the picture starts to become a bit more clear. Simple pattern recognition. We also don't normally say things for no reason. So if instead, Candace had said, my Jewish friend is cheap. Now the friend doesn't just happen to be Jewish, but it's clearly a motivating factor in her reasoning. Kanye was continuously mentioning rich Jewish people who were screwing him over. The initial tweet didn't just say, I'm going to go death con three on the Jews, clearly pointing out their Jewishness, but also said, you guys have toyed with me and tried to blackball anyone who ever opposes your agenda, clearly playing into the Jewish cabal theory to complain about Mark Zuckerberg, since Kanye had been banned from Instagram earlier that day for other anti-Semitic comments. But even though he specifically mentions them being Jewish, Candace will still pretend the people he's talking about just happen to be Jewish. And Kanye continued to play into these tropes and types of rhetoric on Piers Morgan. So what did you mean by that? What, what was, here's your chance to clarify what you meant by Death Gone 3 on Jewish people. Well, thank you for allowing me to say what I meant due to the fact that I was blocked by Jewish people. <laughs> Being <that I'm> <laughs> it's, not, it's not funny, is it? It's not funny. <laughs> he really says his inside thoughts outside, this Kanye, bro. Tainer, I've been wronged so many times by Jewish <laughs> businessmen. Maybe th that's how racism starts. That's how you become racist. You start to think it's a certain type of person because certain type of people hurt you. That's how you become a uh, misogynistic or misandrist. You start to think, oh, I hate women. They all drive bad. And I hate men. They all rape me. Mm -hmm. And then you start thinking all these Jewish people keep taking away my record deals. And all of a sudden you're an anti-Semite. They would feel the pain of when a black artist looks up and they've been completely, they've completely been raped by five Jewish businessmen and there's multiple accounts. Why does the fact that happening? they're Jewish have anything Maybe to do with it? they would feel like that. But why, why would you say it again? It just so happens they are. Well, okay, but it, I wouldn't, I, why categorize them according to their religious faith? Are the, are the people, the Jewish businessmen that led me to that place, are they sorry for the way they raped my I don't people? know who you're talking about in particular, but I don't know why you keep having to say and they're by Jewish. The way, you wouldn't, what is the fact wouldn't... they're Jewish got to do with anything? 
Why do you keep what doing that? What do you that? mean? They're the Jewish businessmen that did that. Because They're business they people. Are. That's what they did. Why do you keep saying Jewish business people? Why do you keep using okay, their religion, let me, let me, let, their ethnicity? Okay, Why do you keep doing up, that? Let me update it then. Okay. Okay, so I'll say this. Would it be... Would, would I have grown into the box you want me to go on if I say to specify the business people that have raped my people that just so happen to be Jew? Yo, he's using the R word really liberally. Jewish. Both Ben Shapiro and Dennis Prager attempted to defend Candace. They talked about her good works in the conservative movement and said they don't think she hates Jewish people. But also, they said they wish she would stop defending Kanye's rhetoric and be more critical. She quickly thanked her Jewish friends for their defense by tweeting out an article by Max Blumenthal that said, white American Jews are living through a golden age of power, affluence, and safety. Acceptance of this welcome reality threatens the entire Zionist enterprise, from lobby fronts like the ADL to Israel, because Zionism relies on Jewish insecurity to justify itself. Which swiftly received a response from Ben on Twitter. But Candace at this point had built a pattern of pushing Jewish conspiracy theories. Like, I just want to separate, okay, something really fast. Because, you know, I say the inside thoughts outside. Sometimes you guys say the inside thoughts out loud. Um, I really believe in my inside thoughts. And I feel like I can back them up with a lot of data and be within reason and correct myself when I'm wrong. The reason I say Kanye is unhinged or maybe unwell or maybe mentally impaired is because he can't back it up with data. I need the data. I'm a data-focused person. I know people on the internet like to paint me like I'm all emotional. Um, Ma'am, I have the data, right? Like, I'm looking at data. Now, the data could be anecdotal, and you might not like it, but Kanye's data, even anecdotal, is wrong. Even his anecdotal data is wrong because he takes that data and pushes it. He projects it. See why I don't like prescriptions? You see why I don't like prescriptions? Because now you're making it for everybody else whether you're Kanye West or somebody who's, you know, another well-intentioned person. You know what I mean? So, okay, there's something about that where I'm like, you don't have the data. So now I'm frustrated. I am frustrated, you know? Like, if I can't trust you around my children, you're not grounded enough. Something is going on. If I can't trust you around the children, ma'am, I don't care, mm-mm. Hundreds of thousands of people here, and I just want them to be recognized. By and again, that doesn't take away from his intelligence, and that doesn't take away from anything that he's done amazing, like his music. I love him as an artist. That doesn't take away anything that he's done. But also, like, artists can be incredibly, like, talented, amazing, smart people who do, again, if I can't trust you around the children, I don't, I'm sorry, you're not, like, grounded in reality. The fake news media, turn your cameras, please. Sorry, I feel like I should clarify what I say. I'm trying to really practice that. Meaning, I can't let you babysit my kids, bro, because I'm afraid you might not, like, feed them properly because you'll have a conspiracy theory that there's something in the food. I mean, literally, when I look at people and I think whether or not, like, you're sane, you have to be sane enough for me to trust you with my child because I know you'll do the right thing. And if you won't do the right thing by my child, like, I don't trust you because it's like an easy litmus test. Do you know how to take care of and care and prioritize a baby's health? If not, that's the test. And I feel like Kanye would fail that test. Even though he seems like a great dad, he really does. He seems to really have a good connection with his kids. A lot of us have connections to our crazy dads. You know, it's not the same, the responsibility I'm requiring. I feel like I can't give him responsibility. I feel like he won't know what to do with it as he's displayed time and time again show what's really happening out here because these people are not going to take it any longer they're not going to take it any longer not going to take it not going to take it after nick fuentes and his america first gripers took part in the riots at the capitol on january 6th nick claimed his bank accounts were frozen and he was put on That's a no fly list for political is persecution this the airline is this the airport is it the tsa is it a federal thing am i on a no fly list or is this something that's being administered by an airline or or something more local she didn't have any answers for me she just told i couldn't get on a on a plane I the tsa says that they banned fuentes from flying because he posed a sorry lacara said 
I think Kanye is a creative genius, but you know what often goes hand in hand with that? Being loopy. Exactly. Kanye is, I think, more on the loopy side of creative genius. He's not grounded, you know? Safety risk to crew members and threaten to strangle flight attendants. Excuse me, could you put your mask on? Sure. Uh, yeah, and let me tell you, I'm gonna land and then I'm gonna get in the airport parking lot and I'm gonna wait for you. And then I'm gonna put a mask over your face, your mouth and nose. You still need to be wearing the mask even if you can't breathe, so. When Elon Musk took over Twitter, Nick was reinstated for less than 24 hours before getting banned again. Quintus was brought back on the platform briefly after Whoa, being- Whoa, that says so much about you that you got banned in the era of, of Elon? Bro. This has been it back in July of 2021. Frentes's brief re-entry back into the Twitter sphere prompted the Republican National Committee to consider <sighs> an official condemnation of both Fuentes and associate Kanye West, according to reporting from Politico. But Nick started to make friends online and got numerous appearances on the left-wing live stream, Destiny. A fast-growing political debater gaining connections in the larger podcast game while continuing to debate people like Lauren Southern and Richard Spencer. He made a name for himself debating the alt-right while playing video games on his Twitch live stream. He clearly denounced their ideas while maintaining a friendly and professional relationship. But when Destiny's Jewish friend, Mr. Girl, got upset that Destiny went out for chicken and waffles with Nick Fuentes. It's annoying, I'll say when people do it. It does matter. It matters to me because he wants to kill me, Stephen. I don't care that he, he wants, wants to, to kill me. That's not he relevant to the conversation. He wants to kill my family. He wants to kill my friends. That's, That's why okay. it matters. That's cool. The Groypers mass brigaded Mr. Girl's channel and reported him to YouTube, getting him banned and his channel deleted. Very good, very good. Yo, I'm shit for it. Report him. Report these freaks. Report, 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 report. Spam, spam, spam. I've done it a couple few times. Destiny decided he couldn't hold a relationship with Nick if everyone he engaged with had to worry about losing their careers because the Groypers might go after them. Nick's chance to get back into the spotlight was ruined. Until he received a call from an old alt-right friend named Milo Yiannopoulos. Milo offered Nick a consulting position with Kanye West's campaign for presidency. Oh, Milo. This gave Nick and his movement a whole new avenue for visibility. He was on shows like Tim Cast and Infowars where he was able to argue for his ideas on Jewish conspiracy theories, as people like Tim Pool and even Alex Jones debated him. Even getting Nick a sit-down dinner with Kanye and Trump before Trump later came back and denounced him. Where before, people knew to stay away from Nick because he was optically toxic. Now, Nick was tagging along with the Kanye West circus that went viral everywhere it popped up. He's a skilled rhetorician that can make kicking black people out of the country sound like he's doing them a favor. Nick was part of a package deal that funny. everyone- Make black people uh, convince them they're doing them a favor by kicking them out, that's pretty good. Yo, that's pretty good, bro. Wanted in on. Damn. Nick commonly says Jews and media and government are controlling the world. He blames wars on Jewish lobbyists and Israeli money. He believes Jews are trying to destroy white hegemony in America by bringing in immigrants. He consistently points at the amount of Jews in Hollywood and the degenerate content they make as a Ooh. sign that they're decaying Christian morality. He spotlights the amount of Jewish people in banking to show they have control over everyone and have the most disproportionate power and influence. He says the LGBTQ and BLM are only gaining prominence because they're receiving tons of puff pieces on Jewish-owned media channels. He's never able to connect any of these things to their Jewish heritage, but thinks it's too big of a coincidence not to be. He says he doesn't know if Jews are all meeting in back rooms to plan and scheme, but even if they aren't, it still plays out that Jewish people are the ones behind everything wrong with America. He claims Jewish people were never oppressed. If they're so oppressed, why do they control everything? There's no way that many Jews could have died in the Holocaust. Jews are able to control the narrative to make themselves sound oppressed so no one can ever question them. That's why the numbers keep growing. But whenever he gets in trouble for the things he says, he claims he's not allowed to ask questions. That everyone is afraid of the ADL, the Anti-Defamation League, a Jewish-run organization meant to combat anti-Semitism. But he believes their job is to make sure hate speech laws and definitions keep changing just to keep people from criticizing Israel and Jews and stopping everyone from finding out the truth. We've had Hispanics like me, and you've had Asians like Sneeko and others. You're always going to have a minority in America. It's never going to be uniform. 
but we are going to ensure that America is a majority white nation forever. That's it. People say, so what are you gonna do? Throw everybody out? Well, a lot of people, yeah. I mean, we are. Christ is king. Christ is king. Christ is king. Christ is king. Oh, bro. I really stay away from this bubble. I have no idea what Nick Fuentes is doing. I just don't care about these people. So I've never seen this. Great. Gross. <sighs> Do you know, oh God, do you know what Sneeko said the other day? God bless him. Like, God bless our Sneeko. He's, I saw him on a podcast talking about being a Muslim because he, you know, he feels like even if people think he's grifting, um, at least he's grifting that he's Muslim. So people are going closer to Allah, you know? And that was a, kind of an interesting point, but he said, you know, what's funny about being a Muslim, he goes, People think uh, most of the Muslims live in the Middle East, but they actually live in Asia. And I was like, um, and I was like, look, I think the moon is a planet. So like, um, not literally, that's a joke. That's a joke. But like, um, I think the Middle East might be in Asia, bro. <laughs> and so like, it's kind of funny, like looking at Sneeko and being like, Okay, like it's hard to take these, like it's hard to take them seriously because like what are they going to do? And then I said that about Nick Fuentes and now look at him, <laughs> you know? I said this about, you know what I mean? I look at like Nick Fuentes and I'm like, who's going to take this guy seriously? Jesus Christ, I didn't actually expect you guys to take him seriously. Honestly, I wonder, you know when people say like America's going to implode, America's almost done with their empire? Bro, I think it's because of the Fuenteses. I do, I know you guys keep blaming progressives, but bro... I know you keep blaming progressives, but come on. It's just, you're going to keep America mostly white? What? What? He's the king of the universe. <sighs> He's the king of the world. He has to be the king of this country, too. I actually don't encourage you to go out there and tell everybody and mix company, you know, don't come home to your parents and say, hey, mom, dad, guess who runs America? <laughs> Let's not do that, okay? I came home from college, I told my parents, I said, Mom, Dad, you'll, you will never guess what never happened. <laughs> like, I just found out about it. <laughs> Bro. 500 young people gathered here today. You know what, Ingrid said you underestimate how stupid people are. Do you know why? I do, I do underestimate how stupid people, people are. And I think a part of it is because I think I underestimate how smart I am. I know this sounds really dumb, but I have this like a uh, because I just I just think people know better. Like I'm like, you must know better because like even I know better. And then I realize like, wait a second, do I know better? Like I'm confused now. Like I always think you must know better because I know better. And I'm like an average person. I always think of myself as like an average. -y, but I'm not like average. But you know what I mean? Like I'm you know, I'm just a person. Went to high school, graduated, read a bunch of books, did a bunch of like nerd research. I forget how much I've consumed and read. Like I, I forget how much I've traveled or how much I understand about the world that other people don't. But also I just assume like you're going to take Nick Fuentes seriously, bro? Like, you know what I, you know, I think it's all the books I've read. Honestly, I think I forget that because I don't think it's a big deal. Like my partner asked me that. We were talking about whether or not it's a big deal to read like thousands of books. And I was like, no, haven't you seen thousands of movies? He goes, no. And I go, what do you mean? I've seen like so many movies in my life. I've seen, I've read so many books because I'm a consumer. Like I just consume and consume and consume information. You know what I mean? So the dilemma is like when I think about people and they're like, wow, you've read 2000 books. I'm like, it's not that hard like to read a bunch because it just means you're consuming, like same thing with movies. Like how hard is it to watch a thousand movies? How hard is it to read a thousand books? But then people aren't doing it. And I'm like, I think that's my neurodivergency probably, like not thinking about how people don't have like this thing where they can just read books all day or like consume content all the time. Or even the fact that I watch like every podcast that's ever been made all the time in my bubble. You know what I mean? Oh, anyways. Because word is getting out 
that we got to get rid of Jewish power in America. <laughs> That's a crazy thing to say. That's a crazy thing to say. Shout out to Tom Foolery. Guys, check out his uh, check out his video. They've done everything they can to stop it. They've censored, they've killed, canceled, blacklisted. But we are here to say that America is not a Jewish nation. America is a Christian nation. <laughs> Christians are Jews, bro. Like, see, I grew up in a bubble where Catholics think of Jews as the before Christians. So like Jews are Christians. They're just like before Christians. So it's weird to me to hear this because I'm like, Jesus was Jewish. How, how do you have a Christian nation without the Jews? And then how do you have uh, uh, Jesus without the Palestinians? Like, how do you have anything without that whole world? You know what I mean? I'm just confused. I'm just confused how you people like, that's I love bubbles, bro. I love people. They're so great, man. I love it. Moki says, people say the wildest things and then act like they silence. Bro, people say the most outrageous shit and they're like, what the fuck? Why do you, what do you think I'm a bad person? I'm like, um, oh, oh my God. What do you think? Why do you think so badly of me? Um, um, ma'am. <laughs> Okay, now I do think Carrie Says King is a dog whistle. I, I've never heard it in this context. And I do think if Candace Owens, Owens is saying Christ is King, it's a dog. Like she's fucking dog whistling. What the fuck? She can't just be out here saying Christ is King. Even though I grew up saying, not me, but like my bubble said Christ is King all the time. If Christ is King now is a dog whistle, we can't be using it. That's the problem with language. It's a construct. Fuck all of these bubbles that are like, Brittany uses language differently. She can't just reinvent words. Christ is king never meant this growing up. Gay is a name. Gay meant happy. Happy. Like words changed. You guys need to grow the fuck up and understand the world doesn't talk like you. Everyone speaks differently everywhere. Grow the fuck up. The same people on the internet who have the audacity to act like I'm the one using language wrong. You don't even understand the world is diverse, you uncultured, like, losers. You're uncultured. You're terminally online. You've never read a book in your fucking life. And you obviously have never stopped sucking the teat of your mother, okay? Grow the fuck up. If you do not understand language changes, I don't want to hear you talking about Nick Fuentes and all these other people. How do you think it, how do you think it works? People like Nick Fuentes change the meaning of words and then you fucking losers keep using it and then you're like, why does everyone think I'm dog whistling? Because in certain circles, it's fucking, that's how it works. Either learn and adapt or shut the fuck up. Bro, I'm not even gonna, if you try to tell me one more fucking time, one more fucking time I use words wrong. Um, ma'am, you don't even understand the words you're using. You're so fucking dumb. Well, and it only makes sense like the stream. Christ is the king of the world and Christ must be king in America. Ugh. Kanye eventually disappeared. The rant stopped and he wasn't seen for weeks. The tents came down and the circus was over. But Nick didn't stop there. Ugh. He went on more and more of the biggest online counterculture podcasts where he was creating waves. But when I listened to him, and Adam, you, you called him a white supremacist earlier. Well, I'm not I'm, trying, I'm not name calling at all. I'm just trying to get him to be upfront about his, his no, But you feelings. said that. You, you said that Nick is a white supremacist. I'm curious to like what he said specifically that makes you think that. Well, I did hear leaked audio of you comparing a uh, white woman having sex with a dog to having sex with a black man and saying that it was basically the same level of degeneracy. And that was like leaked audio. So I felt like that was kind of telling about what you might say behind the scenes. Yeah. And maybe know, that was a joke. Well, almost, well, no, I mean, I, I, I can explain that. It didn't sound like a joke. The left loves people like Nick because then that they can take somebody like him and take his comments, take what he says, and then spin it to that is what every America First oh, they, person yeah, believes I mean, in. Do, do you see how it could hurt the, your side of the political well, I'm I'm not conservative. I'm not a Republican. If I hurt the Republican Party, good. I mean, I support Trump. Yo, he's a little gremlin, bro. That's so funny. I didn't, I, I kind of prefer that, right? Because that's why you should, as the Republican Party, like not associate with Nick Fuentes. He doesn't like you. You don't like them. Great.
Trump? I don't But he's going to be the candidate for the Republican Party. <sighs> yeah. hey, so what did the email say, man? Uh, well, what did the email say, dude? Let, let, let it, let said for, it, it said ban for violations of the terms of service. That's all it said? Are you That's sure? All it said. Yeah. Oh, well, 100%. do you think that going into Twitter space and saying shit like Hitler is base, I love Hitler, do you think that might be a violation of the terms? No, because what I said wasn't a violation of the terms of service. Oh, okay. Do you think it was wrong for Candace to race mix? Uh, yeah. So you don't agree with race mixing, but do you find black women attractive? Yeah. That's all. Yeah, I've said that before. Okay. Well, um, I wish you, I wish you luck, and you know, I don't. I wow. don't. I really don't. I, I mm. don't. I don't wish luck to racists. Amen. Oh, I'm not racist. Uh, yes, you are. Yes, you are, Nick. Yeah, I am a little bit yeah, racist, but do you respect women? Of course. But you just don't want them to have any rights. Well, I didn't say that. Okay. I didn't say they shouldn't have rights. But if you don't want them to vote or drive or or have an existence akin to what they would have in, say, Saudi Arabia, you would say that in large part, then they don't really have rights. Well, I would say probably the ideal is something more like Afghanistan, if I'm being totally honest. Like re and, recent, so what, what's the recent difference between Afghanistan, Afghanistan then and Saudi Arabia? <laughs> like the brutality, I guess. It's like a little, slightly more brutal. And as he went on more and more shows, his streaming website, Cozy.tv, was rising in views. During the Russia-Ukraine war, Candace spread tons of pro-Russia propaganda but continued to claim she wasn't pro-Russia, only anti-sending aid to Ukraine, yet continued calling Zelensky evil and was very soft on Putin. Well, Zelensky has locked down. They raided churches under the guise of saying that these churches were conspiring with Russia. They, they didn't prove that they were conspiring with Russia. They just said that they were conspiring with Russia. So they not only locked, and locked down and raided and took over, transferred control of churches to the state. Does that sound like democracy to you? Transferred control of Protestant and Russian Orthodox churches to the state after raiding them. But yes, he also suspended elections until further notice. He's just running the ball and assuming all power for himself. She said that Zelensky was assuming all power for himself by calling off elections. But she's wrong. The Ukrainian constitution requires him to postpone elections while maintaining martial law. And she acts like Zelensky banning the church as part of the UOC is an act of war on Christianity. While in reality, only 4% of Ukraine's population is part of the UOC. Mm. Meanwhile, the majority of Ukrainian Christians are part of the OCU and their churches are not shut down. Plus, this was a decision made after Kiev accused the UOC of ties to Moscow and spreading Russian propaganda. And the decision to ban these churches was backed by Ukrainian parliament by passing the bill. Not a decision made solely by Zelensky. She said there's no proof of church leaders conspiring with Russia. Ukraine's security service initiated 68 criminal cases, including accusations of treason against representatives in the UOC, with 18 already being convicted by the time Candace recorded that episode. Mm. But Candace also said they transfer control of Protestant churches to the state, which I can't find any evidence of anywhere. Though Russia has outlawed Christians evangelizing outside of churches, and there's even reports of Russian troops unjustly killing pastors. In some cases, Candace is claiming Ukraine is evil based on incomplete information, while in other cases, she's just outright fabricating information, making Zelensky sound evil, when the reality is, is that Russia is much worse in each instance. And she repeated these talking points, among others, numerous times over the next couple months. She used similar tactics during the Israel-Palestine war. Ben has always been a staunch defender of Israel, as have other hosts at The Daily Wire. Didn't Jesus say, if a man should come into your home and slaughter your children and rape your women over your dead body, you should declare a ceasefire to give him time to celebrate his vicious enormity so he can make plans to do even worse? While Ben is obviously Jewish, all of the other hosts are loud and proud Christians. As they keep at the trend of holding the conservatism of old, their religious views say that Jews are God's chosen people. Mm. Jesus was Jewish and killed for claiming he was king of the Jews. The Bible states that he will come back in the second coming to rule over the new Israel here on earth after all the Jews profess that he is the Messiah. Everyone knows Jews don't believe that Jesus died for their sins, but Christians still have respect for the Old Testament and the history and traditions that led to their current practices. Yet younger generations of Christians don't believe this. They believe that Jews stopped being the chosen people when they turned their back on Jesus and nailed him to a cross. That's when Christians became the new chosen people. So while older Christians don't think Jews are getting saved or going to heaven, what? they do stand up for Jews and hold Israel. Yo, being Catholic feels so much more grounded sometimes, like Roman Catholic. 
Because like, yeah, all these Christian churches and their megaphones and their weird music and everything, like for me, I don't know. I just feel like growing up Catholic, Roman Catholic, I was taught Jews were the original Christians who never converted to follow Christ, but they're like everyone has a potentiality to go to heaven. According to Catholicism, it's up to Christ. Like that's why you can't judge. Like my parents and they never raised me to believe like you have to be Catholic to go to heaven. That's not a thing we believe or we're taught to believe. It's more like God knows what's in your heart. But if you were a Catholic and you were confirmed and baptized like I was, then rejecting Christ is like a big deal because I already like took the vow at 15 to be a believer. And then I turned my back on Christ and became a secularist. So technically, my soul is in major danger versus a Muslim or a gay person who's never been raised Catholic. They have a higher chance of getting to heaven than me just because of that. But, you know, if God knows all your hearts, bro, my heart be fire. So I'll be fine, bro. I'm confident. It's real as the Holy Land. Younger Christians don't feel the same kinship with Jewish people. They see them as the ones who murdered their savior and believe they are bastardizing their holy scripture. So when Ben and the other Daily Wire hosts all defended Israel's actions, Candace Owens didn't claim- Yo, what if we helped religious people fulfill all their prophecies and if their God didn't come back for the second coming, they get two tries, state funded. And if their God doesn't come back, they have to dismantle their religion. It can never be brought up again. Huh? How about that? What if we did it? What if we stay funded every religious thing? They're like, oh, we need like cattle to slaughter, right? I heard the Jews are doing that or something. I don't know anything. But I heard on flagrant, the Jews need like cattle to slaughter for the second coming. Okay, why don't we give them the funding? They can slaughter their cows. And then when nothing happens, we can be like, okay, we're done with this. Dismantle the religion. No more religion. And then we can slowly eradicate religion and magical powers from the conversation. Unless we actually discover real magic, then that's a different conversation. And then we can create our own new religions, but it's based off like who dances better. Eh? Hmm? In one side or the other, at least not explicitly. On November 3rd, 2023, Candace Owens tweeted out, no government has a right to commit a genocide ever. There is no justification for genocide. I can't believe this even needs to be said or is even considered the least bit controversial to state. It seems pretty obvious that she's claiming Israel is committing a genocide against Palestinians, but she later claimed that she was only pushing back against genocidal rhetoric from Republicans, since some had come out saying, there's no such thing as an innocent Palestinian. This is oh. what notoriously led to David Horowitz, the Freedom Center, writing a piece saying, goodbye, Candace Owens, which was one of the worst smear pieces I've ever read. Goodbye, David Horowitz, to you too, because how dare yeah. you? Yeah. How dare you lie to your audiences, claim that I said this about Israel when I was talking about Brian Mast, just put words in my mouth mm. because you assumed, which is interesting, by the way, that you assumed I was talking about Israel when you can clearly see leading up to this tweet. I'm just liking um, Yashar Ali was a journalist and he was like, and he's actually pro-Israel, I think, as I, I take him. And he was like, can we all just say that this is wrong? Like what Brian Mass is doing here is wrong. And I was like, this is crazy. It's genocidal. And it's happening yeah. in an American Congress. What do you like? We should all always be able to say that gen the genocide is wrong. Like, I, I hope. That's okay. I feel good. I think the tweet will age well. Right. If this is true, and she's only calling out genocidal rhetoric, this is a really dumb way to do it. She didn't quote tweet anyone and didn't name anyone specific. She's a political pundit. She had to know she was using the same language as all the anti-Israel protesters claiming Israel is genociding Palestinians and committing an ethnic cleansing. Saying there's no such thing as an innocent Palestinian is a pro-war crime sentiment. But yeah, it's not really pro-genocide. It's excusing the deaths of unarmed civilians, mm. but isn't saying that all civilians should die. So either Candace is insanely ignorant, made a really dumb tweet that doesn't make any sense, and should be sympathetic to why everyone read her tweet the way that they did and apologize, or she knows exactly what it is she's doing. Hold on, hold on. No government anywhere has the right to commit a genocide ever. There's no justification for genocide. I can't believe this even needs to be said or is even considered the least bit controversial to state. So we so we agree. Wait, so she's in favor of Palestine? I keep getting confused what everyone's side is because I feel like they keep changing it. And I feel like genocide is a political term in the Israel-Palestine debate. Because genocide has a specific meaning, but since words change meaning, I'm not even sure that it needs to be a genocide for it to be unethical. Whatever is happening between Israel and Palestine fucking sucks. <clears throat> like, we don't need to call it a genocide for it to be what it is. A horrific, like, battle between two countries who should have done better to avoid this. And I blame men for it because men are the one who are doing it. So I blame you. And apologize. Or she knows exactly what it is she's doing.
the same thing she always does. Yes, uh, the question is about Candace Owens. I think her behavior during this administration. Yeah. I, 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 I can't, what was that? Yeah. 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 I have a yeah. yeah. She still works for my company. Yeah. Yeah, I think she's been absolutely disgraceful. I think that, I think that her, her faux sophistication on these particular issues has been ridiculous. It's not faux sophistication, it's ridiculous. Everybody can see the moves that she's making and the things that she's saying, and I find them disreputable. I can't respond to it beyond what he's saying because it's just ad hominem attacks. I don't know. Yeah, because it's not, you know, we disagree or yeah. I, you know, I, I don't think she's correct or maybe she doesn't know what she's talking about. It's absolutely disgraceful. Yeah, exactly. And I would be embarrassed. I would. So I think that the video speaks more to Ben's character than it speaks to mine. Has he texted you to apologize or explain or anything? No. Tucker Carlson is the ickiest, slimiest worm I've ever seen in my life. And I, who, I would just love to talk to him for a second so I can feel his aura and be like, yup, freak. Like, ooh, everything he's ever caught saying, like he's infamous for literally calling people peasants and saying you have to convince them that they don't want to be one of the elites. He is literally the grandson of a billionaire background for Swanson Frozen Foods. So him acting like he gives a fuck about the average person making $7.50 an hour in the Midwest, I don't even want to hear it, girl. We should take all these billionaires and for the next 10 years, they have to literally live off minimum wage. And I want to see the way they would literally old yeller themselves from the pressure. I would, they would literally old yeller themselves from the pressure of living like everybody else. I'm, I'm not, I'm not even kidding you. They literally wouldn't be able to do it. The same life a majority of people are living every day. These people would never be able to last. They all say they did. They all say like, I remember when that was me. Do you? Do you? Were you? Do you? You wouldn't even, you wouldn't even last. If you had to do it for six months, you wouldn't even last. You wouldn't even last a year, 10 years. You wouldn't even, oh, you wouldn't even last. Nothing. I haven't heard a single word. It just was sort of something that he said. And you know what? Ben and I have many disagreements, so I don't think that that's particularly something that's interesting. Um, we disagreed on the COVID vaccine. We disagree yes. on Ukraine and Russia. He has taken virtually every stance that has been the You know, I kind of feel this way about branding. I think companies should be able to have good representation. And if one of their co-hosts is in representing something that aligns with the company's values, I do think you should fire them. I do think like Dave Ramsey, who fires people for cheating on their wives, like I think that makes sense. He runs a Christian company. He believes in the sanctity of family. You can't just be out here fucking other people who aren't your wife. Same thing with Ben Shapiro. Like, I think it makes more sense. I mean, hell, I mean, I'm sure some of you could think of a reason you would want to work with somebody. You would feel uncomfortable. Like, what if I was a queer person who owned a company? Like, do you want me to be hiring a homophobe? Like, that's fucking awful. And then they're out here spewing anti, like, homophobic things. Like, how frustrating. Like, maybe I, maybe there's a reason. Maybe you hire someone who happens to be religious, but they're really nice, and so they're good at their job. I just feel like with Ben Shapiro's work, it is a representation of a whole brand. So I think he should be careful about who's representing it. I even asked Stanford, like, should Stanford want Andrew Huberman representing his brand? Yeah, Andrew Huberman's affairs... And his gaslighting and his consent violation had nothing to do with Stanford and his job as a scientist, but as a whole, like a brand overall, like, are we not sick of misogyny? Are we not sick of racism? Are we not sick of like people keeping their jobs after doing horrific things to people? And at the same time, what is a horrific thing to do to somebody since gay people were being fired in the 60s and 70s for just being gay? So again, we need to be careful that we're not firing people because we're racist or biased, but we also need to be careful that you know, we can protect our brands, you know, from being represented by anti-vaxxers. I don't want an anti-vaxxer, like, supporting my brand. You know what I mean? Like, that stuff is so weird. I don't, like, you know what I mean? That's not something I'd want represent. Like, I don't want to, you know what I mean? It's not a vibe, you know? Opposite of mine. On November 14th, 2023, Candace tweeted out scripture without an explanation for what she was saying. Mm. Blessed are the peacemakers for they shall be called the children of God. Blessed are they which are persecuted for righteousness' sake, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are ye when men shall revile you and persecute you and shall say all manner of evil against you falsely for my sake. No one can serve two masters. Either you will hate one and love the other, or you will be devoted to the one and despise the other. You cannot serve both God and money. Candace Owens literally serves money. She serves money so effing hard. That's why I don't trust her. She doesn't come off authentic at all. 
She's obviously serving money. Like I wouldn't say that like Ben Shapiro or Jordan Peterson serve money. I don't get that. I don't get that impression from them at all. Like at all, right? Like at all. But I, Candace Owens does give me that in the authentic thing. Cognitive says cheating might be the new gay. And in 20 years, you'll look back and go, I was on the wrong side of history. Cheating is based. Funny, hilarious. I do think it makes sense. Like if you're a cheater, it doesn't mean you're bad at your job. I just think it depends on the brand. So like, I think some people can cheat and just be going through a really hard time. And if they make repentance, then obviously don't fire them. You don't fire their cheaters that are repenting. You fire the cheaters that are going to do it again and represent your brand. Right? Because like, again, everyone can come back. You don't fire a guy just because he's addicted to drugs. You fire the guy who is so addicted to drugs, he's fucking up your brand. You know, you don't fire the guy who steals. You fire the guy who steals and it becomes a company problem because he just stole everyone's future paycheck. You know, you get people help. If people don't take the help, you know, I want to make that clear. I don't think cheaters should be fired because they cheated. Cheaters should be fired because they're not sorry. Right? Or like, People who are on drugs should be fired because they're not changing, not because they're on drugs. Like, I want to help people. And I think the best way to help people is get rid of the people who won't change and help the people that are really trying to work on it. Because lots of people are struggling and they really need income and they really need jobs and they need the money to pay for therapy to help them with their problems. And they're not going to get that therapy if you keep firing them. But also, you got to be, you know, you got to be very careful with the people that aren't going to get better because they could ruin your whole company and everybody you're working with. So obviously, and I'm trying really hard to explain my thoughts thoroughly, I'm not pro-firing cheaters just because they cheated. I have a whole thought process behind this, which I know is like my mistake as a content creator, not thoroughly like explaining my ideas. I'm, it's not just about cheating. It's about assuming you're not going to say sorry, assuming you'll do it again, assuming you'll cheat on other people, assuming you're willing to screw over not only your wife or husband, but the company. So again, I would never be pro-firing anyone because they made a mistake. I just, you know, we have to make sure that your mistake isn't actually just who you are and you're going to make it worse for everybody else in the long run. In the long run, working for a company is a part of being a team player. Being in a marriage is a part of being a team player. And if somebody on the team is fucking up, they have to go. If somebody on the team is fucking up and they won't get better, they have to go. And then she responded to her own tweet with, Christ is king. <gasps> no, Candace. Yeah, fuck, she wanted to get fired, bros. No offense. Everyone who's on Candace's side saying like, oh, I can't believe Ben fired her. Bro, can you not see she wants to be fired? I'm so sorry. Candace is playing 4D chess. There's no way... She did this and didn't think she'd get fired. Do you know what I'm saying? And she's a horrible person. She doesn't give a fuck about people. She's willing to throw black people under the bus, women under the bus. This is a woman who said, if I could do the greatest job on earth, I would, which is be a stay-at-home mom, but I can't. I have to work. No, you don't. Be a stay-at-home mom, girl. Her husband's worth like $100 million, guys. She's worth like $15 million. Okay? I don't want to hear from these people. And Shapiro responded with, Candace? If you feel that taking money from the Daily Wire somehow comes between you and God, by all means, quit. Instead of Candace apologizing or defending her tweet, she instead claims victimhood by saying that Ben is attacking her for quoting scripture. Other Christians started to repeat this sentiment. Candace replied below Ben's tweet saying, You have been acting unprofessional and emotionally unhinged for weeks now. And we have all had to sit back and allow it and have all tried to exercise exceeding understanding for your raw emotion. But you cross a certain line when you come for scripture and read yourself into it. I will not tolerate it. I think the bigger problem that they're having is that Candace wants a... Are people still watching Dave Rubin? Are people literally still watching Dave Rubin? Stop. A, a glorious exit. And nothing would be better than if the Jew fired her for, so that she can go launch a new media company. Oh, Dave, Ram Dave, Dave, Dave Rubin is a Jewish man, isn't he? Oh, this is the Megyn Kelly show. Oh, wow. Megyn Kelly's still on the air? And he may be with Tucker. I, I don't know exactly. Uh, but Ben sat on this for a long time. You know, Ben's get, been getting hit from people on his side saying, oh, you let her, you let someone who works for you. And I don't know that Ben fully runs operations there anymore, but he's the, you know, he's the face of the Daily Wire. You let this person continue to work there after the craziness with Kanye and everything else. So Ben is getting hit on both sides, right? He's getting hit on the Candace side of things. Uh, and then he's also getting hit from his base saying, oh, we told you, like, what did you think was going to happen here?
two very articulate and passionate people in Ben and Candace, uh, who whose conflict of visions on this issue spilled out into Razors. into the public square, which is going to happen from time to time. I'm, I wish it hadn't happened the way that it did, but it's going to happen from time to time. And uh, yeah, I think it just is sort of the territory when you decide to start a media company and give people broad freedom to express opinions. Now, obviously, opinions within certain parameters. You know, if, as I said a year ago, if Candace said on the air things that uh, Kanye West was saying a year ago, I I would have to step in or, or whoever was operating the company at the time would have to step in. Oh, 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 oh. Um, hold on. Uh, martyrdom is a valuable is valuable in political bubbles. Bees is right. It is. It really is valuable. Um, I think it's what I find so distasteful though, because it feels so performative. That's why I don't like it in people. I don't like martyrdom in people. Look at me. I'm taking all of the arrows for you. I just hate it in people. Because when it's real martyrdom, it's not ego based. It's not about you. It's about the people you're protecting. And this just feels like it's about her. That's not what Candace has done. Not only is Ben obviously not attacking her for quoting scripture, but she has a history of using Christianity to attack others. And then mm -hmm. when she's called out, she claims they are attacking her for being religious. It's pointedly ridiculous. Now, why are we talking about him again? Well, when in closing back in January, I essentially said that we were no longer going to talk about Steven Crowder. And I instead offered that people should pray for him because obviously, when a man does something like that, he is broken. You don't do something like that to your friends unless there is something going on in your personal life. Well, Steven Crowder announced this morning that he is going through a divorce, and I want to show you bits of that video. Candace, thank you so much for coming. Thank you guys so much for having me. Honestly, I really did appreciate talking Ooh. to you guys. I thought it was fascinating, and I think everyone was super respectful, so I, I really appreciate it. And you, because you're so young, I'm just gonna say a prayer for you because I, I do think, you. I really do believe that in there, there's just a different life for you, and I'm just gonna say a prayer for you tonight. I just wanted to say that because say I a felt. For me tonight, for I, me, because I don't know what that prayer entails. Well, <laughs> I'm gonna say so it anyways. It. Is what is the? What are you trying to do? What purpose are you trying to fulfill when you, as a 35 year old man, see me sitting down with these young women, trying to say you don't need to do this, you don't have to do this for money, and you like attack it and try to be like, Candace is just a bitch, or like whatever, like she's blah 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 blah, she's just being a high school mean girl. It's like no, I am trying to tell these women that they are worth more, and when I said to that girl at the end of it, which I don't believe you showed, that I will pray for you and that you can do you can do much more than this. That came from the heart, actually. No, it did. that is the most condescending thing a religious no. person can say to a non-religious person. I will pray for you. Okay, you can deal with your, you know, I, I know that you went to a Jesuit school and you got some issues with somebody. Why do you think I have saying, issues? But I meant that because- I loved my because, high school. Because, I, like, I because, think it's fine. Because for me to say, like, I meant what I said to her, that I would pray for her. Like, her, when she was describing Why my, do you need to tell upfront, her that you'll pray for her? Because I, I did pray for her. Then do it privately. Why do you need to tell her that? You're only telling her that because you think you've got such a condescension about you. In the first clip, mm. Candace is talking. Though I do think Candace is condescending, once I got over my religious trauma, I did accept people saying they would pray for me because I get that a lot. People tell me that all the time. Oh, my God, Brittany, I'm going to pray for you. And I've learned to accept it as something good. I w From Candace Owens, it does sound condescending, though. Fuck her. But I will say that after my religious trauma, uh, after I got over it, um, I did start accepting it from people because before I got over my religious trauma, it just sounded like so condescending from everyone I heard it from, even old ladies. But I think Candace is being condescending, to be fair. Like, I think Candace is always being condescending, always. But minus Candace, other religious people who say it, they do mean it. They they do really mean like, they mean it to be like, oh, thoughts and prayers. Like, they really do mean like, I'll keep you in mind, you know? So, but Candace... Every time she opens her mouth, she's condescending. But I don't mind condescension. Obviously, I can be condescending. It's that I don't think it's backed by a belief system. I don't mind condescending attitudes if it's backed by a belief system. I've noticed in myself. But I do mind when it's not feeling like it's being backed up. She feels like she's being condescending because she is a mean girl. I think she is a mean girl. Talking about how ridiculous Steven Crowder was with the big con contract drama. And even goes on to talk about his divorce and how ridiculous he's been talking about that saga right after reiterating what she said in another show, that she knew how hard this must be for him and that she wasn't going to talk about it anymore, but was instead only going to pray for him. And then she continued talking about it for another 10 minutes after. In the second clip, she's talking to OnlyFans and Instagram models for hours, explaining to them how degenerate their lives are before telling them she'll pray for them. And in the last clip, 
after Destiny tries to explain to her how condescending it is to say, I'll pray for you, in that context, she accuses him of being anti-religion instead of explaining why he's wrong, and tells him some Christians truly just want to pray for you, but that doesn't make it any less condescending, regardless of her intent. While I'll pray for you can definitely mean you genuinely care for them, is an incredibly condescending thing to say to someone after fighting with them. Mm. Context changes what we mean when we say True. things. True. I'll pray for you normally conveys that you will talk to God and ask for their betterment, essentially communicating that you just want better for that person. Based this on. is a beautiful sentiment that Christians mm. convey to one another on a consistent basis, mm -hmm. and is one of the many great things about the virtues with Tom is so right on this because he grew up religious. It's a very powerful thing to say to each other as Christians. So when people say it to me, I know that's what they mean. But he's right. Context does change things. And Candace is condescending because she's like fake Christian anyway. I don't even consider Candace a real God believer. There's no way that woman believes in God. I refuse to believe it. She doesn't act like anyone who believes in God. She certainly doesn't. No, no. But to be fair, most people don't act like they believe in God. Most people say they believe in God because it gives them brownie points socially. Like Candace, it gives her brownie points socially. You know what my mom said? Because one time I was like, what do you think about Candace Owens? She goes, what do you think about Candace Owens? I was like, no, no, no. What do you think about Candace Owens? She goes, no, no. What do you think? And I was like, I think she's a fake bitch. And she goes, okay, Brittany. And I was like, I think she's a fake bitch. And she goes, no, no, no. I was, she goes, I think she is off. I think something about her doesn't feel as dedicated to Christ. I was like, she fake as fuck, bro. And my mom was like, she does feel like she's not genuine. And I was like, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. It was pretty funny because my mom's so Catholic and stuff. And then Candace married a Catholic. So my mom was like, oh. And then my dad used to watch Candace Owens, but they kind of fell off her because they there's something about her that's just like fake as fuck, bro. Within Christianity. But I want better for you can also be a very catty thing to say when talking to someone who doesn't think they need better. If I have a friend who comes to me and complains that he's hit rock bottom, mm. he's upset that he's addicted to drugs, unable to keep a job, <sighs> unable to keep a girlfriend, and is finding trouble gaining any grounding in his life, it would be perfectly acceptable for me to say, I hope one day you'll be able to do something better with your life. These are words of encouragement from one friend to another in a time of need. But if instead, I- Wait. H says your mom knows who Candace Owens is. My parents, my parents raised me in politics. My mom and dad know who everyone is. They know everyone who's important in politics. So they don't know any of the YouTubers. No offense. They know the big players. Of course, they know the YouTubers who are like on the Daily Wire and like all those people. They don't know the losers. No offense that I hang out with. <laughs> they don't know anyone who's like, they only know the big people. They know everyone on YouTube who's like a big player. You know what I mean? Who's actually like in politics. Um, so they know all of those people. It's not like they're going to know who Hassan is or Vosh or something. You know what I mean? But my parents know everybody else. You know what I mean? Um, but yeah, of course they know who Candace Owens is. I think they've, they've, they, they're in politics. Like my parents raised me in politics. Yeah. What do you, what do you think we talk about when we talk? I just finished telling the employee behind the counter at Taco Bell that he messed up my order, that he's incompetent. And then I finish it off with a, I hope one day you'll be able to do something better with your life. That would be a very rude thing for me to say. In both instances, the words are exactly the same, but the context is different. Changing what is- Look at how he's in bubble examples. Look at context is bubbles. Bubbles is perception. You know, this is beautiful. Tom is explaining what I mean by bubbles, what everyone means by bubbles, what everyone means by perception. When someone says you're in a bubble, they're saying your perception is limited. And I'm saying we all live in bubbles, but we think we don't because all of our perception is limited. And then because we know how to be passive aggressive, we also do this thing where like behavior is perceived a certain way. And because we're smart, we know how to understand context. Not all the time because sometimes it changes or our perception is warped or like maybe, you know, whatever. But hello, ma'am. This is such a good example. Tom did so good on this video is being communicated. Anyone who lives in the South knows that bless your heart doesn't mean what it sounds like 90% of the time. The context of a statement and who it's being said to can change the entire meaning and intent. Tons of funny clips on the internet are making jokes out of confusing the context of a statement to make it seem as though they are saying one thing mm -hmm. versus another. Candace didn't just tell someone she would pray for them. She said it after attacking them for their beliefs and mm -hmm. lifestyle for a mm -hmm. long period of time beforehand. And she didn't just make a tweet quoting scripture, but implied that Ben had dual loyalty, a common Jewish trope to claim that Jewish people's allegiances are to Israel more so than the United States, and implying another trope about Jews and money. But she also capped it off with a reply to her own tweet stating, Christ is king. Word is getting out that we gotta get 
Uh uh-uh, uh, specify which Catholic bubble is saying that. I've never heard that in my whole life. Which Catholic bubble is saying the Vatican? Who? Who? Jews and not Israel? That's the kind of Christianity they find anti Semitic. What anti Semitism really Oh, what? What did she just say? It means is that you don't accept Jews as your ruler. So when they say Christ is king is anti Semitic, it will always be anti Semitic. The Catholic Church will always be anti Semitic. <laughs> Do not, no, do not associate the Catholic Church with your bullshit, bro. No, okay, as a Catholic who grew up for real Catholic, okay, no, this is, n I've never heard any of this bullshit coming out of the Vatican, bro. You better, fuck. He stole a thing that people have been saying for 2,000 years, Christ is King, and changed it to be anti-Semitic, and now he's like, we've always been this way. Um, nope, it's just you, you fucking whore. <sighs> Ooh, I really hate racists, bro. They're so fucking boring and short-sighted and so dumb. God, racism is so fucking dumb. <laughs> it's so, so boring. It's just like, it's the, it's the most basic. You didn't even get to choose to be this color. Why are you acting like it's something you accomplished, sir? I submit, because the Catholic Church has a rival claim on who runs the world. This is exactly why I've always called Candace Owens a medieval Jew hater, emphasis on the medieval. Because so often when she's talking about Jews or responding to Jewish accusations, she never really answers the accusations or the questions. She always kind of veers into this weird spiritual territory about how Jews don't worship Christ and how Christ is king. This is how she responded to two Orthodox Jews, me and my dad, this morning Ooh. when we raised valid arguments against her. Christ is king. Pink. Every knee will bow. She doesn't actually answer the questions or the accusations. Her answer is the fact that Christ is king and that one day we Jews will also bow to Christ. She Ooh. did almost the exact same thing with Ben Shapiro. She simply quoted Christian scripture and then insinuated that Ben Shapiro, a Jewish yarmulke wearing man, worships money. Look at her work. You'll see that almost always when Jews are mentioned, she starts talking about demonic people, satanic people. People, monsters, filth. Apparently, crisis king is a racist, anti-Semitic term. That's why I said this. People and Sneeko grew up Catholic too. I don't know how Catholic. Probably not real Catholic. No offense. See how I have a standard for religion? Because people own titles but don't live by the religion, and they give like beliefs bad names. Not that you need help because Catholicism's, you know. But like that's what I don't like about like oh, we got to be careful about your representation, people. And not that individuals represent all religions, but. Mr. I drank water twice on a stream during Ramadan, sir. There's all this criticism right now. We can watch some of those videos. And I want to catch up all the Candace Owens drama. But Christ is King is officially based on the ADL and Bot Shapiro. They're calling it an anti-Semitic term. That's why I say it. I don't say it because I literally believe Christ is the king of all kings. He's not the king of all kings, but I like saying that because they. Yeah, yeah. See, that's the problem is when you meme, when you're being so. See, Andrew Schultz did this on his podcast, but he's a comedian and he is being like aggressively sarcastic so it's it's different context that's the i think we all have this dilemma as content creators are we comedians are we commentary people are we trying to be important sometimes i ask myself that like i used to have my channel under comedy because i just wanted to be able to make jokes all the time but sneeko can't make jokes and meme if you're also going to be an advocate for muhammad or allah or peace be upon him i don't know how it works in islam but like if he's going to be an advocate for islam he can't just be like out here making jokes he actually should be covering his tattoos probably too because like haram and like he needs to like get more strict with his like eating habits during ramadan like if you're really representing islam fucking do it then do it you know but at the same time that's a problem with these people are you representing something or are you just representing yourself? Because if you're just representing yourself, who cares? Make a meme, say Christ is king, whatever. But also, you know what I mean? Like, don't say it if you're not really anti-Semitic to some extent because the internet, it's hard. It's hard. It's hard. Like, I'm not anti-religious, but I make fun of religious people. But I don't really want to live in a world where people don't get to be religious. But also, wouldn't the world be better if nobody was religious? Maybe. I think so. But I also don't know what that means. Because some people hear people say that and think like, oh, you want to live, you want to like get rid of all the religious people? And I said, no, why do you guys always go to violence? I am never thinking violently. I am never thinking about killing anyone. I'm never thinking about ending people. I'm never thinking of eradicating anybody. Brittany's brain is never thinking violently. Even when I speak violently, I'm never actually thinking violently ever. So when I say things like I would rather live in a world without religion, I mean, without believing in magic that justifies the stoning of people because you don't like the way they are. 
but I'm never, I'm not saying let's get rid of the people that exist. I'm saying it'd be nice if we evolved out of this need to make up a God in order to feel good about ourselves. And so people are so violent. They're just like, oh my God, you want to get rid of religious people? Oh my, oh my God. And I'm like, it's just because the world is so violent. They couldn't imagine that other people aren't secretly wishing to be violent. It just sucks. Like it, it kind of sucks, you know? Conrad says, Sneeko engaged in Holocaust denial and says, Crisis King. My question is, this is a joke? Um, Kind of. So you, well, kind of. I think he is a Holocaust denier in terms of the, the play, they play the numbers games. I definitely would say that it's better, okay? I would say it's better to deny them. Well, I would say that the world would be better, better without Sneeko's ideas without Nick Fuentes' ideas without Fresh and Fit's ideas. Ooh, I thought about making this list of who I think makes the world better, neutral, or worse off. Sneeko makes the world worse off, in my opinion, right now. Fresh and Fit make the world worse off right now. Um, I think, like, if I had to think about it in that capacity, like, they make the world worse off. I don't know what's in their hearts. I cannot read their minds. I do not know. Gun to my head. If someone put a gun to your head and said, is Sneeko anti-Semitic? Like, you wouldn't be able to answer that because I don't know. But like, you know, you can make, you know, judgments. All I know is that Sneeko's rhetoric, I think, subjectively, makes the world a worse place. That's my opinion. And I think that's true. I think his rhetoric makes the world as a whole a worse place. So we can decide how we feel about that, I suppose. I think it's a it's a term it's a term that triggers them. So if we can get something, if we can get these slogans that attack and fight back, we can use a term like "crisis king" to trigger the people that control the world. Jeremy Boring came out saying that. So even if he doesn't think "crisis king" is anti-Semitic, saying the Jews control the world, I think, is anti-Semitic. That's the problem with Nico. It's like if you think the Jews control the world and that's bad, like they didn't just like end up being there because everyone has an empire at some point. That's like saying America is a superpower, controls the world, and we should get rid of them. Like that's the irony. If Jews control the world and America is the superpower, but you want to get Jews out of the world or out of America, does that mean America won't be the superpower? I'm confused. The Jew conspiracy makes no fucking sense to my brain. Because if the Jews are in charge and you want America to be the way it always was and it was always controlled by Jews, I'm just confused. I hate racism. It's so stupid. I just feel like it never makes sense. It just never fucking makes sense, bro. Oh, I'm exhausted. You, uh, H says, where do you rank Papa Gut? Oh, Papa Gut's definitely do better. He's doing better for the world. Papa Gut's a, a net plus for the world, for sure. That he's out of town working on a movie and has an interim CEO running the Daily Wire while he's gone. So neither he nor Ben can fire Candace, nor would they if they could. She's paid to give her opinion, even if they disagree with it. Candace continued making conspiratorial and anti-Semitic comments. That was just Michael Jackson being crazy and being a raging anti-Semite. John Branca is Jewish and Tommy Mottola is also Jewish. Wow. Did you guys know that? Did you guys know any of that? Because I certainly didn't. So yes, Michael Jackson's estate was transferred over to specific individuals who happened to be Jewish. So what do we make of all of this? What do we make of all this? What do you think about all of this? Well, I'm going to be honest with you that these claims keep coming up too often in Hollywood for me to be comfortable with it. And even when Kanye did share that he was speaking about specific specific people in Hollywood that he believed were coming after him and were trying to control him. He actually named some of those individuals. He shared personal text messages uh, of a friend of his, a personal trainer to the stars, who again happens to be Jewish. It's utterly ridiculous. It's insane. I know many Jewish people watch this show. Oh my you God. My friends. And so what I believe is something that should be explored is whether or not what's happening is that just like within all communities, there are gangs, right? Gangs can form, we understand this. In the black community, we've got the Bloods and we've got the Crips. Well, imagine if the Bloods and the Crips. She better say Jews are a gang. Well, then you're losing business, bitch. Be better than them. What? Oh my God, I'm so annoyed with this whole conversation. Bro, I... Candace Owens, totally net net negative for the world. Ooh, I love this game. Let's play who's the net negative. I think she's a net negative for the, for the world, Candace Owens. We're doing horrific things, murdering people, controlling people with blackmail. And then every time a person spoke out about it, the Bloods and the Crips would call those p people racist. Oh my God. What if that I is what her. is happening oh right my now God. in Hollywood if there is just a very small ring of specific Look, 
I radically accept that a part of the population will always be this kind of person, but I think this kind of person is a net negative for the world. Just a complete net negative. <gasps> but I said Papa Gut is a net positive for the world and he's Jewish. <laughs> The people who are using uh, the fact that they are Jewish to shield themselves from any criticism. Uh -huh. It's good for thought, right? And I think, again, there have been enough people that are speaking out about a ring in Hollywood, also a ring potentially in D.C., that we should start to ask those questions. All of us, Black, Spanish, Jewish, Chinese, Japanese, all Americans should want answers because this appears to be something that is quite sinister. Candace never explicitly states that she believes the conspiracies. Instead, she plays a clip of lackluster evidence and then says, wow, what do you guys think? This is happening too often. We all need to be asking questions. This really seems sinister. Never really taking a strong stance or telling you what her position is. Which by the way, brings me to number two on the did you know question. Because this really blew my mind. Do you know which books the Nazis were burning? When you're in the public school system, you, you really focus on World War II and the Nazis. So I was shocked that I never learned throughout that schooling that the brown shirts, you know, the, the student activists that went around burning a bunch of books, were burning books that they deemed to be Marxist and that they deemed to be overtly sexual. She never took any pro-Palestinian nor anti-Israel stances either, at least not explicitly. It gets especially senseless when we are being emotionally manipulated to want to support causes overseas. And I didn't support our money being sent to Afghanistan. I did not support our money being sent to Ukraine. I did not support, therefore, our money being sent to Israel. But she had numerous pro-Palestinian advocates on her show without challenging them much, like Norman Finkelstein. And originally, it's true, they weren't aimed- I hear he's a bit of, a, of an ass, but he is, he's is he been memed to hell, he's pretty funny. But I heard he's kind of like weird. I don't know anything about him though. Aiming directly at, an eth uh, at a genocide or aiming at an ethnic cleansing. And then had heated debates with pro-Israel advocates, like Rabbi Barclay. So to say that we can't even explore that possibility that Rabbi Shmuley, you know, and that, that, that this list that somebody is giving or something that artists are saying might be true is somehow anti-Semitic. I'm not saying all black people or I mean, I'm sorry, all Jewish people are gang members. I am no, saying yes. that it is, of course, possible that a gang is operating anywhere in the world. That should just be allowed to be said without being accused of creating sorry, a trope. Candace, I keep telling you the things you have said repeatedly are hurtful to a huge number of Jews and are considered anti-Semitic. Could you okay, provide so for us a definition of anti-Semitism? It's no longer against them for their religion, it's against them for their race. Because anti-Semitism is the oldest hate in the world and the hate that mutates. You said it's a hate that mutates. Correct. So, your belief then is that the definition of anti-Semitism can necessarily change, is that correct? It's not just my belief, it is the commonly accepted understanding in both the Jewish and academic worlds. Mm -hmm. I would just say off the bat, I do not accept that definitions can just mutate. That is something that I, mean, I could debate that on, like the definition of a woman, I mean, and I'm saying not just about Jewish people, I think that we have to have a concrete definition to work with because then you can just People play this game. Why do you play this game as if words don't change? Why do you play this game as if words don't change meaning over time? Why do humans do this? It's to avoid. It's to avoid responsibility. It's because adapting is hard. Oh, why can't things just stay the same? Because they haven't. The world shifts and evolves. I really dislike this argument and I'm going to push back on people for bringing it up. It makes absolute zero sense. To say words do not change, things do not change. Okay, you can you can understand that things change in terms of what words mean. Just look at slang. Slang changes. Okay, you know words change. Okay, it's like they're avoiding responsibility and being you know held to any kind of modern standard because they're too I don't know what it is resistant to change or maybe like 
angry about it or she wants to play these mind games, you know, she doesn't wor understand words are subjective. Nobody does. Nobody does. Nobody understands words are subjective. They don't understand reality is subjective. They don't understand religion is subjective. All these people think they're all playing in some reality that's like objective all the time. You know, it's just kind of crazy. Just update and say, actually, I've changed that. And now this is what constitutes yeah, anti-Semitism. This is actually one of the dumber points from anti-Semites. They complain that the definition of anti-Semitism changes, not because it doesn't make sense for definitions to change, because words and definitions are constantly changing, but because they are mad that they fit the definition. I mean, anti-Semitic statements are never good for anybody, right? It's kind of like being anti-Black. You know, it's really interesting. I didn't realize that I could be considered anti-Semitic till I read one of the definitions of anti-Semitism. Look at this. The definition says, making mendacious, dehumanizing, demonizing, or stereotypical allegations about a world Jewish conspiracy or of Jews controlling the media, economy, government, or other societal institutions. But isn't that what you said? That Jews run everything? Yeah, but that actually is considered to be anti-Semitic. Right. People like Nick, Kanye, even if the Jews ran everything, it wouldn't be because of a conspiracy theory. That's why I don't like conspiracy theories. It's you're acting like if the world again is. I just feel like none of this. I, I don't even know why I'm arguing for something that doesn't make any sense. I and Candace want anti-Semitism to mean hateful of Jewish people, because as long as they don't feel hate towards Jews, they can feel better about themselves. But just as the word racist evolved, so did anti-Semitism. Racism used to mean tribalism and superiority based on race. But over time, we started to describe the person as a racist and their actions as racist. Meaning you could be a racist, a noun, or be racist, an adjective. And actions of a racist, one who thinks their race is superior, shows patterns of unfair discrimination when it manifests. So we use the word racist and racism to communicate unfair discrimination based on race or ethnicity just as we use anti-Semitism to mean unfair discrimination based on Judaism. Some definitions may add words like prejudice, which is a bias, which would lead to unfair discrimination, or antagonism or hostility based on race, which would be unfair discrimination, or they may word it a bit differently. But pretty much all definitions are the same. Using tropes and stereotypes are types of discrimination and are patterns we would see from people who hate Jews or believe they are superior. Saying an individual black person or a group of black people are more likely to be criminals because of their race is not only fallacious, but a type of unfair discrimination because it's fallacious. And as mentioned earlier, people rarely mention things for no reason. If you're mentioning one's race or ethnicity, it's likely a motivating factor in your reasoning. So when Candace, Kanye, and Nick all keep mentioning the Judaism of the people they're complaining about over and over and over, the Judaism seems to be a motivating factor. Who again happens to be Jewish, happens to be Jewish, just happened to be Jewish, just happened to be Jewish. Jewish, who again happens to be Jewish, who happened to be Jewish, Jesus. happens to be Jewish. Oh, wow. Even though they keep <sighs> saying they just happen to be Jewish. Candace pushing on the definition of anti-Semitism is a common tactic from neo-Nazis. They know they fit the current definition. So instead they have. Cognitive says, to be fair, everyone keeps telling people that black people can't be racist towards other people because they have no power because everyone's always having two conversations when they talk about blacks being racist. Black individuals can be racist. Black people cannot be racist. Black people represent systematic like representation, so they can't have it because they're not systematically in charge, so they can't systematically oppress. And then black individuals, of course, can be racist because they're black individuals making a decision. Everyone's always like having two conversations. They think white people are racist because they're white people versus saying, no, white people are racist because they're systematically benefited in a society that is systematically oppressing to people of color, right? So like we're never even having those two conversations. No one would disagree that individual black people can be racist. Obviously, they're individual black people. But if you're saying black people as a group can be racist, that's not, doesn't make any sense because we're talking about systematic like oppression at that point, which they are not the prominent group. They're not the prominent group. I don't know if you guys know that. They're not the prominent group. That's why the conspiracy theory of even the Jews being in charge. You guys, there's not very many Jews in the world. I don't know if you know how many Jews are in the world, but isn't it like, God, I don't want to misquote it. Hold on. It's not very many. 15 million people. Holy fuck. You're afraid of 15 million people? America's 350 million people. 
I'm so sick of this, bro. Are Jews literally 15 million people? You're so fucking paranoid. You're afraid of black people in America that are what, like 13%? Chill the fuck out. You think they're in charge of your life, you fucking idiot. And then on top of that, you're afraid of Jews and there are 15 million of them? Jesus fucking Christ, your conspiracy theories are so fucking dumb. I hate conspiracy theories. Just follow the fucking data. Your data is so fucking far from reality. I love you so much. It's a bubble. Habibi, you're in like a bubble and I love you so much, but you are making the world a net negative. You are making the world a huge net negative. Just look at the data. Don't look at your conspiracy theory data. Look at the actual data. How are 15 million people in charge of the world and they're literally always terrified of being decimated? How are 13% of black people in the United States systematically oppressing, oppressing you? I'm gonna fucking, okay? Just look at the data. That's what I'm sick of people being like, um, I've got the numbers. The, look at the numbers then. The math isn't mathing, bro. I have to argue that it's a bad definition because they don't want to believe that they are anti-Semitic. They say things like, the ADL keeps changing the definition of anti-Semitism. Or, did you know the ADL includes questioning the Holocaust in the definition of anti-Semitism? Or, the ADL thinks it's anti-Semitic just to criticize Israel. It's in their definition. And these are dumb things to say. I'll explain. So firstly, the ADL doesn't decide the definition of anti-Semitism. Their definition is on their website. The belief or behavior hostile towards Jews just because they are Jewish. It may take the form of religious teachings that proclaim the inferiority of Jews, for instance, or political efforts to isolate, oppress, or otherwise injure them. It may also include prejudice or stereotyped views about Jews. The ADL's definition is pretty much the same as all the other definitions of anti-Semitism, really just talking about unfair discrimination based on Judaism. But secondly, the ADL doesn't include questioning the Holocaust or being critical of Israel in their definition. On their website, they show the working definition of the IHRA, International Holocaust Remembrance Alliance. They use a similar definition as everyone else. But they also show examples of anti-Semitism, which would obviously include things like Holocaust denialism, conspiracies about Jewish cabals, anti-Zionism, and repeating other Jewish stereotypes and tropes. Not all of the examples on the website are inherently anti-Semitic, only common red flags for anti-Semites. And they add to the list of stereotypes and tropes, which is why people keep saying that they're changing their definition. Candace keeps digging herself deeper. She continues to push conspiracy theories about the Jews in media and banking, and starts fights publicly with Rabbi Shmuley and other Jewish figures while playing clips of small conspiracy channels touting ideas about Michael Jackson's death and Jeffrey Epstein, P. Diddy, and Charlie child molesters in Hollywood. And I so, agree, but culture is a very complicated culture thing. Culture is not Movies a complicated thing. So it, complicated. It's, I think they are, they are deciding that they have the amount of control over culture that you think they do. There's no shot that anybody would be able to top down control. Well, that the, much stuff. like I said, there have been a lot of a lot of evidence that has come out, whether you're looking at the Jeffrey Epstein case or you're reading through the 72 page document uh, for the Diddy lawsuit well, that suggests even the Jeffrey, that the government is involved. Even on the Jeffrey Epstein case, like what's suggesting government involvement here? What do you mean? All under the guise of just asking questions. I'm just asking questions here. Again, I'm just asking questions because it's getting pretty kooky out there. She has now bought into almost every Nick Fuentes talking point. Jewish people are the elites controlling everything. They are attacking Christianity in America. Book burnings weren't so bad. The people she's criticizing just so happen to be Jewish. No one knows what anti-Semitism means because the definition keeps changing. And anytime she's given any pushback, she plays dumb, like she doesn't know what she's saying. She claims victimhood by saying you're attacking Christianity, or she says she's not allowed to ask questions. Hey, so the problem is real. The question is, is it an individual problem or a collective problem? A problem really is a claim of victimhood. You're being victimized by something. Sometimes that's true, sometimes that's not. The next thing that happens is that you blame that on society. And once you blame the society, you very quickly end up, if you do not have evidence, at a conspiracy theory. There's a group of people who are stopping you from solving your problem. You blame society, you don't have an answer. So it must be a conspiracy. And you're just asking questions. You don't know, right? This is the game that is played by so many corrupt commentators. Just asking questions. I don't have to show you evidence that something terrible is happening. I don't have to actually demonstrate how the thing is happening. I don't have to tell you who the problem is, wink, wink. But I can just tell you right now that there is a problem. But even, if, and, and if I'm asked about it, hey, I'm just asking questions. Now, let me tell you something about just asking questions for a second. Just asking questions is a game for children. My son is seven. He can just ask questions. My daughter is 10. She can just ask questions. Mm. If you are 50 
and you are just asking questions, I don't think you're just asking questions. Oh, that's a good social um, awareness. That's the thing that you have to worry about online. Like uh, for me personally, one of my boundaries is like you can ask questions who are genuinely curious. But if I get any inkling that you are, quote, just asking questions, mm -mm -mm, bitch. And that's the difference. Can you tell when somebody is, quote, just asking questions in a passive aggressive way and they're trying to be bad faith or someone's innocently asking questions? So I would say no, there's no bad questions. Right. But there are there are bad people asking bad questions. So they might say something like, um. Oh my gosh, what is like, uh, what is like Christ is King? Like, I just thought that was like a Christian thing. Oh my God, like, has that become something different? And that's a person who doesn't know. That was me like two weeks ago. I was like, what is this Christ is King? What's happening? Right? One of you were like, Brittany, oh my gosh. Then there's this, like, um, what is like Christ is King? What? Now it's bad? What? Christ is King is bad? What? I'm just saying Christ is King. What? What could be wrong with that? Christ is King. Like, what could be wrong with that? It's like they know. If they know that there's an association on the internet that it's racist, and they're playing this game of like, what? What could be wrong with it? Versus I just genuinely was out of the loop for a minute. I'm like, wait, did that change? What's up with that? You guys were like, yeah, now it's like this new thing. And I'm like, oh, fuck. Okay, update my language. But the person who already knows the updated language and is using it anyways, that's the person you got to look out for. The person you have to look out for is the person pretending to feign ignorance when they know better. Not the person who genuinely doesn't know better. People who genuinely don't know better do get mistaken for people that know better, right? And that's the problem. If you know better and you're doing it anyways, that's the people you got to pay attention to. But it's take it's a responsibility of you as a neighbor and the responsibility of the people around you to make sure you know the difference. You don't want to attack an innocent person. You don't want to shoot down a person who's just misunderstanding. You don't want to attack an innocent person, guys. But you certainly don't want to let a conniving, 4D chess playing piece of shit. Get away with it either. You know? I think that your level of curiosity is actually quite low. I think that you don't care enough to know or know enough to care. I think that the vast majority of people who are in the just asking questions business have an answer that they want to suggest, but they know there's no evidence for it. So instead they hide behind just asking questions. In other words, they're completely full of shit. Mm-hmm. As soon as I get back in the Oval Office, I'll also immediately end the war on Christians. I don't know if you feel it. If you have a war. There's a war. Under crooked Joe Biden, Christians and Americans of faith are being persecuted, and government has been weaponized against religion like never before, and also presidents like never before. Here I am. I always say Al Capone was treated better than I was treated. Scarface, Al Capone, he was a tough one. Christians are under siege. We must protect content that is pro-God. We love God, and we have to protect anything that is pro-God. We must defend God in the public square and not allow the media or the left-wing groups to silence, censor, or discriminate against us. We have to bring Christianity back into our lives and back into what will be again a great nation. On March 18th, 2024, Isaac Shore posted an article on the right-wing news outlet named Mediaite titled, Candace Owens endorses wild anti-Semitic conspiracy theory about Jews being drunk mm -hmm. on Christian blood, showing that Candace had liked to comment on Twitter asking Rabbi Shmuley if he was drunk on Christian blood again. And another tweet telling Rabbi Shmuley's daughter that her and her father are making it too easy for people to hate Jews. Then Isaac posted another article later that same day titled, how long will the Daily Wire stand by Candace Owens? He outlines a history of anti-Semitic comments from oof, Candace and misinformation oof, she's uh, put out about Israel. Oh, uh, uh. You know, sometimes I say on stream things like, oh, I talked to that person, I talked to that person. But then I think about it, I'm like, oh, never mind. Um, oh, like, oh, if I was in this room with these people, oh, I'd feel, oh, this is my hell. Ben Shapiro is like the only tolerable one in this whole group. Oh, I feel I feel like my energy being zapped as I want. Oh, these people are my nightmare. Like when she told people that Muslims were forced to live in certain parts of Israel after her trip to Jerusalem. I don't think it's where they're allowed to live in Jerusalem. I think it's that there are there's an Armenian quarter. It's not saying the Armenians can only live here. It's that there are communities just like there's a 
a Jewish community in in Jersey here, and there's a Muslim community in here. I don't think, you know. I think but. it is where they have, I mean, at least that's what the rabbi who was taking me around, he said, these are the Muslim quarters, so this is where the Muslims. There live, but I, he didn't say anything about legally saying they cannot live in other places within Israel. No, the Israeli people I know literally, if anything, are talking about how they're integrated and they have plenty of Arabs or Muslims who live there. I mean, everyone's Arab, really, but like everyone's there and everyone lives there and they get along fine. It's funny. The Israelis I talk to are like, we're very nice to Palestinians and they live here and it's peaceful. And then all of a sudden, like Candace is talking about how they're segregated. And then I don't know if that's from some of the Palestinians and I don't know who she's vouching for. I don't know who she's batting for. I just don't understand Candace's perspective. Is she pro-Palestine? Is she just anti-Jewish? How exhausting. Proper. My understanding from the rabbi was that this is where the Muslims have to live in Jerusalem. It might have been a misunderstanding. Imagine if you went into an inner city in the United States and somebody told you this is a predominantly black neighborhood and you said it looked more run down. Would you say that America is systemically racist because of If I was giving cities? a tour of it, I wouldn't say this is the black quarters. I probably uh -huh. Wait. Am I too live in Jerusalem. It might have been a misunderstanding. Imagine if you went into an inner city in the United States and somebody told you this is a predominantly black neighborhood and you said it looked more run down. Would you say that America is systemically racist? Because yes, if I was of giving cities? a tour of it, I wouldn't. Yes. Right? Am I crazy? Isn't that a yes? They're primarily run down because of racism. Am I crazy? Did I hear him wrong? Maybe I'm listening wrong. Say this is the black quarters. I probably. Uh -huh. Or this is a black neighborhood. But maybe somebody in the group might misunderstand that. The article quotes Jeremy Boring's tweet where he says that they won't fire yeah, Candace right. Owens because she's paid to give her opinion, even if they disagree with it. But Isaac goes on to say, but what Boring <laughs> describes as opinion can at this point be universally recognized as a misleading euphemism. Perhaps it is technically bro, true. Biza says, bro, I feel dumb. Like I'm getting dumber by the minute. I feel like I'm getting so stupid watching these people talk, bro. I literally feel like these are the dumbest people in the world and I am like getting dumber listening to them. This is why I stopped watching conservative media even to like give them a chance. I check in on occasion so I see what my parents are watching. But Jesus, these people are fucking in a bubble. It's fine. When you're in a bubble, how smart can you be? Like you're, I mean, you should be well cultured and traveled. You should see the world doesn't revolve around you and your beliefs. But it's difficult because if you come from a belief system where you think you have the answer for 8 billion people, then even if you traveled around the world, you'd only think of other people as like gross. That's the problem. Like if you travel around the world and you think you have the answer for 8 billion people and you're better than other people, then you will go to other countries and call them shit countries. You will go to other countries and think like, ugh, if only you lived like me. And I'm like, versus when I travel, I'm like, oh, cool. People don't live like me. And this is beautiful. Like what a beautiful world to live in. Like I see like primarily like Muslim countries thriving in their own way with their own problems. But like, so does America. Cool. I love that. I look at Canada and I'm like, okay, you're thriving, but like you're fucked up in your own way. Like everywhere is thriving, but fucked up in its own way, you know? So it's kind of like one of those things where I get exhausted listening to people that actually think like if everybody was like me, it'd be better. Because in my brain, I feel like everyone does it right, but differently. And everyone does it wrong, but differently. I don't know. I'm just exhausted. I'm exhausted watching these people. Good for Tom for making this video, though, because, like, honestly, I would not have had the spoons to make something like this. I'm so proud of him. It's so good. True that Shapiro and Owens have a difference in opinion over whether there is a small ring of sinister Jews exercising disproportionate power in Hollywood and Washington. And perhaps it is technically true that they disagree about whether some Jews are drunk on Christian blood. But to describe it principally <sighs> as a difference in opinion is to miss the point, which is that Owens is a bigot detached from reality and paid by the Daily Wire to promote her worldview to its audience. Nick Fuentes sees Candace's feud with Ben and other Jewish leaders, her seemingly anti-Israel stance, and her use of Christ as King as a weapon against Jews, and he decides to jump in. He starts reviewing her show on his streams and praising her heavily. The background on this, Candace Owens has just been at war with the Jewish mafia lately, and she, <clears throat> I guess, insufficiently disavowed Kanye when all that was going on. So the Jews have had beef with her ever since. It goes back a little bit further, but that's really when the latest stuff began. And Ben Shapiro threw her under the bus, called her an idiot in private, and it went viral. And she went on maternity leave. But since she came back a couple weeks ago, she's been going hard on the Jews. She said that Jews... We're creating all this pornography during the uh, interwar period in Germany, and the Nazis burned all their gay books. 
and she talked about how the Jews own the porn industry, and she basically talked about how there's this Jewish mafia that exists. But Carr says, if Nick is endorsing you, you don't fuck that bro. Mm -mm, mm -mm, mm -mm. And she's been going at it with Rabbi Shmuley on Twitter, calling him filth. Even though Nick is banned on Twitter, he made a new account with the handle Standis Owens, where he constantly tweets out his support. On March 19th, 2024, Candace aired an episode of her podcast titled, Why Does Everyone Think I'm Going to Be Killed? Where she chronicled every accusation of anti-Semitism that's ever been thrown her way and explained why each one of them was wrong. But none of the context that she adds actually changes any of the characterizations. How Jeez. sick and how sinister is this getting? How utterly insane this is all getting? It's starting to feel like there's some sort of a bounty on my head and the person that can convince the public of something that is so ridiculous that I can't come back from is just going to receive a ton of money. And Isaac Shore is really competing for that because do you wanna know where he, he got that conspiracy theory from? A tweet that I had liked of someone defending me when Rabbi Shmuley was smearing me. Mm. He dug up an old- Was it smear, was he smearing you? <laughs> like on a bagel, was he smearing? <laughs> Oh my god, I'm so funny. I'm sorry, so you said smear and I heard schmear and then I got hungry. Fuck it, I want a bagel, bro. Mm. Old tweet of mine that was from February tried Ooh, to present it as if it was funny. something new and something that was about him before our back and forth ever even broke out. So I liked the tweet because it clarified the right date of the tweet, saying that Rabbi Shmuley, this tweet is obviously from February 20th. What are you, drunk on Christian blood? I didn't even pay attention to the last part of the tweet. I just obviously liked that this person was calling out this BS smearing tactic. Nah, well, nah, did nah. I know that Isaac Shore- Nah, nah, nah. If, if fucking white supremacist, bruh. Nah, nah, nah. It's like Myron Gaines liking one of my tweets, bro. No, no, no. First of all, I blocked Myron on Twitter because his tweets are so annoying to see. I hate Twitter. Honestly, I'm this close to deleting my Twitter just because it's so annoying. It just helps get my videos out there. But oh my God, I hate seeing his tweets. I've blocked so many people on Twitter. I just hate all your tweets. All of you suck at tweeting. Stop tweeting. Nobody needs to hear what you have to say. But if like it's like if Myron was like, good job, Brittany. I'd be like, shut the fuck up, bitch. We are not friends. Okay, shut the fuck up. I don't want people defending. Look, guys. I'm okay with people I have a difference of opinion with defending me. That's like, that's respectable. Myron and I don't have a difference of, a, of a opinion. I think he's a bad person. Like there's a difference. We're all good people, bad people in our own bubbles really. But in his bubble, he's just like a net negative for the world. I don't want anyone who's a net negative to be out here pretending like they are on my side. No, no, you're in the net negative bubble. So I won't even say bad because bad's like too, there's too much loaded in there. How about net negative? No. You are net negative for the world. I don't want your support. Go away. Go away from me. No. Or and a team of journalists are now monitoring every single like of mine on Twitter to see if they can convince the public that I am advocating for insanity. This is how desperate they have become. On March 20th, Media Matters, a left-wing media watchdog outlet meant to call out right-wing channels for hateful takes and misinformation, posts an article about Nick's support for Candace titled, Holocaust denier Nick Fuentes celebrates Candace, quote, she has been in a full-fledged war against the Jews. Similar to Mediaite, the article shows Candace's anti-Semitism and points out that almost everyone she's been fighting with lately has been Jewish, drawing in people like Nick Fuentes and his fans. On March 21st, the ADL tweeted out the article from Media Matters with the caption, White supremacist and Holocaust denier Nick Fuentes is praising Candace Owens' vitriolic anti-Semitism. It's hardly surprising, but it does set off alarm bells. Mm. When bigoted people come together to push an anti-Semitic agenda, it adds fuel to the fire of hate. Candace quote tweeted this saying, I do not know Nick Fuentes, but you already know that. What I do know is that everyone can see what you guys are doing to me. Your pattern is well established and the world is waking up to it. My crime is having stood up for myself against your network of smears. It's hard to believe with Candace and Nick both close to Kanye West and engaging in similar podcast spaces that they never ran into each other. But even if that's true and she doesn't know Nick, she hasn't done anything to denounce him either. You don't have to denounce every person who has ever said anything bad before. 
But if they are using your words and your image to promote their ideology, mm -hmm. most people would make sure to separate themselves from it if they mm -hmm. disagreed with it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I love that. I love how all the Jews have to watch this show. This is the face, dude. No, <laughs> no, no, no. But this is the face of a total Jewish defeat. We have to stand. Go off, girly. We fucking got your back, Candace. Eat them up. Eat them up. Oh. They're filth. But Candace hasn't done that at all. And yet, here's Nick Fuentes directly contradicting what Candace said in that tweet. But anybody who was in my inner circle can attest that in the opening weeks of Yay24, I was distraught. I talked to Candace Owens about this. I talked to Classical Theist about this. I talked to everybody around me. I said, I don't know what to do. This guy's a psycho. This guy is pure evil. I want nothing to do with him. Ladies and gentlemen, we got him. In the clip, Nick not only says that he knows Candace Owens, but he mentions her as part of his inner circle, yet she'll continue to claim that she doesn't know him. I don't know if Nick actually said she's in his inner circle. Wait, let's listen again. <clears throat> Candace Owens about this. I talk. We Candace on. hasn't done that at all. And yet, here's Nick Fuentes directly contradicting what Candace said in that tweet. But anybody who was in my inner circle can attest that in the opening weeks of Yay24, I was distraught. I talked to Candace Owens about this. I talked to Classical Theist about this. Is Classical Theist in his inner circle? Because he could have been saying, I heard it more like, I talked to my inner circle about this, comma, Candace Owens about this, comma, Theist, whatever, comma. I didn't, I didn't, maybe I misheard that. Did you guys hear that? Not that I need to defend Nick Fuentes, obviously, fuck him. But like, I just want to be accurate. Because I couldn't imagine them in each other's inner circle. I feel like there's no way they would trust each other. You know what I mean? But maybe I just also define inner circle very differently. Um, but like I couldn't imagine Candace and Nick actually being in each other's inner inner circle. You know what I mean? Do you remember um you remember when the losers on the internet, like uh the Weinstein brothers and Jordan Peterson and Sam Harris and all of them tried to form like a little a group together? And that it kind of fell apart because they realized, like, they didn't get along. Like, some people would say, oh, they're, like, in an inner circle together. But, like, they're not really in inner circle together. So I feel like he didn't say Candace was in his inner circle. But I, I could see why people would take it that way. I talked to everybody around me. I said, I don't know what to do. This guy's a psycho. This guy is pure evil. I want nothing to do with him. Ladies and gentlemen, we got him. In the clip, Nick not only says that he knows Candace Owens, but he mentions her as part of his inner circle, yet she'll continue to claim that she doesn't know him. You know, there was a video circulating of him calling me a disgrace or a faux professional or whatever yep. it was. And I decided to choose peace. And then when I chose peace, he responded to the peace with not, not peace. <laughs> so why wouldn't he just fire you? Well, as I explained on Tucker Carlson's show, like Ben doesn't have the power to fire me. On March 22nd, 2024, Jeremy Boring, the CEO at The Daily Wire, posts on Twitter that The Daily Wire and Candace Owens have ended their relationship. They don't tell us why or give an explanation for this. H, that's correct. Nick doesn't have any friends, so anyone is his inner circle. Pay attention to that. Pay attention to people that don't actually have friends or have a really hard time making friends or keeping them. They think anyone that's been nice to them for more than a week is in their inner circle. Pay attention to that. Nick doesn't have any friends. So anyone who gets close to him probably feels pretty close. You know, that's why people feel so alone because you think people being nice to you for a few months is like inner circle. You guys need to get your shit together. Okay. Just because someone's nice to you. Like that's why people are so lonely. Kanye can't tell who his friends are. Justin Bieber can't tell who his friends are. Nobody can tell who their friends are because none of you like even understand what it means to be someone's friend. You think being friends with people is hanging out and getting along for longer than 10 minutes. Jesus, I could do that with anybody. Anybody on the whole planet I could do that with. You think you do that one time and you guys are fucking best friends. Separation. Mm -hmm. But three Girl. separate theories start to circulate. One, that she was fired for going too far with the anti-Semitism. <gasps> Two, that she- If Nick and Candace were boning, bro, first of all, would, that would be so scandalous. I would eat that shit. I would eat it like ass, bro. I'd eat it so good. But also, that'd be crazy. That would be wackadoodle on so many fronts. I'd feel bad for Candace's husband. She's married. Or her kid to know her mom's a cheater. Oof, embarrassing.
she was fired for being a Christian, and three, that she was fired for being against Israel in the Israel-Palestine war. Regardless of which theory one believed to be true, if they were on the right, and believed her firing to be unfair, they claimed it was a violation of Candace's free speech and that the Daily Wire was canceled. How have conservatives not learned that free speech has nothing to do with businesses? Her. But what she was being canceled for, <sighs> no one was really sure. But then Candace made another <clears throat> ominous post on Twitter trying to give people a hint while maintaining plausible deniability. The post read, Overwhelmed by the amount of love I've received over the last 24 hours from all over the world. Thank you all. Also to my brothers and sisters in faith who are recognizing that we need to stand by one another. There is a deep-seated hatred in the media for Christians. Ugh. The worldwide persecution of- Bro, the way the Christians pretend to be victims. Yo, I grew up with this my whole life. Brittany, don't you think Christians are targeted more than anyone? As they look at their queer kids. And I'm like, no. I'm, I'm literally in your home right now. What are you talking about? Can you imagine growing up gay in a Catholic household that's like, don't you think Christians and Catholics are persecuted the most? And you're like, ma'am. Of Christians rarely receives coverage and is readily dismissed. We should not allow that. I don't know mm. what's in Candace Owens' mind. I was on her show once or twice at the beginning, uh, but I never heard, listened to it. And the reason I never listened to it was because of all the stuff that I felt was silly. I mean, some of the stuff I felt I, I knew what she was going to say, which was the, you know, the Blexus stuff, which I'm all in favor of. But the stuff about the moon landing being fixed, you know, uh, rigged and 9-11 uh, being an inside job, she would hint at. And re recently there Jesus. was Mrs. Macron, the first lady of uh, France, is a man and also. Even if she had been born or assigned male at birth or whatever, fuck you, bro. And also, the worst part is that she got with a 16-year-old or, like, fucked one of her former students. I think the thing you should be focusing on is the age difference, not the transgenderness, which, by the way, doesn't exist and has never been proven. And even if it was proven, who would care? That's what I'm saying. The fact that Candace Owens is like, oh, my gosh, she might be trans. So? I'm more concerned with the age gap relationship of the fact that he was a teenager and she knew him growing up. That is more of my concern. I think it speaks volumes that you're concerned that she's trans, if you know, that, which is not true, versus the age gap relationship. Amazing. Good job, people. Priorities are so people tell you who they are. Cognitive says, can you imagine a gay growing up in a Muslim household? I know so many gay Muslims. Yes. What do you mean? It's almost the same story I have growing up. You know what I mean? Like, it's almost the same story I have growing up. That's why we connect, because we almost have the same story growing up. That's it's silly stuff. Then the Jew stuff started. Like, some of those books Hitler burned weren't so bad. You know, I, I was shocked. This is something Candace actually said. Mm. I was surprised to learn that the books Hitler was burning or the Nazis were burning, they weren't, they weren't good books. They were bad books. They were socialist books. <laughs> so when you start saying that, you're sin that's a dog whistle. I'm sorry. I know it's a leftist phrase. I know they use it, you know, randomly with anything you say. I understand all of that. Still, still. Again, and this is not personal animus toward her, but I find difficult to excuse this when anybody does it. Mm. The, the tr truth that hid wickedness that I thought was the most wicked truth to use was the truth that Christ is king. I am a but that hasn't happened at all. Christians have welcomed me with open arms except this Christ the King anti-Semitic crowd. You are quoting scripture like Satan does in the Bible. Ooh. So when Jeremy Boring, Ooh. a Christian man, has to- He called her the devil. He was like, you know who Satan is? Candace Owens. That's what he just said. Sign a check, a big check, Ooh. to pay someone to talk about Hitler wasn't so bad in burning books Ooh. or a Jew is choking on Christian blood. Mm. Or Christ is king. Mm -hmm. When Jeremy Boyne has... See, Hitler is total net negative for the world. So don't give a fuck. If you're a net negative for the world, I don't give a fuck what the good you do. Even with nuance, and there definitely is nuance and an allowance for that. I feel like even if you had a scientist that was like doing net negative for the world, you can figure out your science shit from prison. How about that? Hmm? How about that, girly? So I feel like, see, Hitler, net negative for the world. Candace Owens, net negative for the world. You know, it's just like a net negative for the world. Just net negative. Kanye West, because he hasn't produced any good music in the last five albums, net negative for the world, you know? 
supposed to sign that check. He's doing something that he cannot abide. He cannot abide it. <sighs> this is too far, not because of Ben, but because of what it really means. It's really this hatred of Jews, this level of hatred of Jews, is a hatred of God. If Candace wants to say those things about the Jews, about Hitler, no matter how she dodges and weaves, she has to leave the Daily Wire. The one reason she has to leave above every other is because Christ is king. The phrase Christ is king starts trending on Twitter again in support of Candace and in protest to her getting fired for being a Christian. I logged on to X, formerly known as Twitter, this morning to see that the, the words is Christ is king was trending. Who and is so this? in my exuberance, I immediately jumped on the bandwagon and I'm like, Christ is king. Boom. And then the comment section started filling up. Apparently, this was an anti-Semitic thing to say. What is happening? Of course, there's a catch to why this is trending. This doesn't become a left versus right uh -oh. fight. There are Christians who see what's happening and are upset that Candace is using Christ's name in vain. Christianity Today writes an article titled, Christ as King is not the slogan some white nationalists mm. want it to be. They explain that using words like God and damn are perfectly fine, but when put together, the context changes the meaning and is now considered blasphemy. Nick Fuentes and other Christians continue to claim Barbara says, I can already see the haters. Oh my God. Brittany said, Candace Owens and Kanye are as bad as Hitler. <laughs> Literally, bro. Don't even, I'm ready, girl. I think that means I'm coming up in the world when people take me out of context. Girl, I think that means I'm coming up in the world. Are they like, I think that's it, girl. I think I'm just coming up in the world, you know? I think I have to get used to it. As long as I, I'm proud of Christians for standing up for themselves because Christ is King has been a thing that I grew up saying my whole life and had nothing to do with Jews or anything. So the fact that they're trying to change it, you can try to stop the wave, but it's going to be hard. See, that's the question. Once it's changed, can you change it back? Can you reclaim the word? I think you can. I think we've seen it done with minority um, people. Good luck, Christians. Good luck. I would fight so hard to take. I would fire Candace Owens from every, everything. I would, that's the problem is they won't do it. If you're willing to vote for Trump, right? Like ultimately you're not going to stand up to Candace Owens. I'm sorry. And that's stating a fact that Christ is king cannot be racist. They simplify their minds as much as possible to believe such childish points. The phrase 1350 was used by white nationalists back in the alt-right days as well. The idea What's that mean? What's the, oh, okay. is that FBI crime statistics show that black people commit 50% of violent crimes, while they are only 13% of the population. Pointing out the disproportionality to say that black people are inherently more violent than white people. Why don't men ever use these statistics against their own gender? How much violence is caused by men? And that we need to keep them away from women and children. So alt writers ran around posting 1350 under black people's posts and comment sections. When others would point out how racist the sentiment oh. is, they would claim it was. That's when I see those tweets, if I see anything like that, I block them. That's what I mean. I got to get off Twitter. I just block everyone that feels like they're in the racist bubble at all. Like if I hear any, if I got any inkling, any inkling, if I see like an American flag in the profile and glasses on your forehead. I'm just like, mm, block. <laughs> Sorry, RIP to the Republicans. It was a fact <laughs> and that facts can't be racist. While mentioning this statistic in a conversation about criminology obviously isn't racist because it is a fact. Saying it at random to black people isn't just stating a fact, but communicating much more. Mm -hmm. Jeremy Boring posts on Twitter why the phrase Christ is King is anti-Semitic. The post states, how is saying Christ is King anti-Semitic? The same way anything becomes anti-Semitic, when it is used for the purpose of expressing anti-Semitism. It's like asking, how does a shovel become a murder weapon? When it is used to murder someone, this isn't hard. A shovel is not innately a murder weapon. Saying Christ is King is not innately anti-Semitic. It's all about how a thing is used. Saying eat some cornbread is not racist if I say it to my three-year-old when she's refusing her dinner. If I start saying it as a response to X post by a black commentator I don't like, mm -hmm. it has taken on a meaning beyond what is innate. Mm -hmm. Lauren Chen replies below. Uh-oh. You say Christ is king is anti-Semitic when it's used to troll Jews. If you curse out a Jewish person and top it off with Christ is king, then certainly that is sinful in taking the Lord's name in vain. But is saying Christ is king and nothing else to a Jew trolling? I've seen people complain that it's being said in bad faith to Jews. I do not believe this is possible. Even if Lauren, 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 Lauren. First, that's like going to Muslim or a Jew and being like pork is king. You know why that's offensive. They don't believe in Christ. 
What? What? Lauren, if you go to the Jew, if you go up to a Jew and don't say anything else except Christ is king, that's offensive in and of itself. That's like saying like you're a loser for not eating pork. What are you talking about? That's so offensive. I don't understand how people don't understand you're just being offensive. Like there's a difference between saying that shit on your own show and you're talking to Christian people and you say Christ is king. But why would you go up to a Jewish person and say Christ is king? What? Ma'am. Ma'am. If you are saying Christ is king to a non-believer, specifically because they are a non-believer, that is not bad faith. That is evangelism. God, Christians are so obnoxious. Shut the fuck up, bro. Christians are so obnoxious. I love them so much. They're so obnoxious. Eve, nobody wants you to fucking evangelize. Shut your mouth and leave the rest of us the fuck alone. Huh? Huh? Leave the fuck of us, like, leave us the fuck alone. Jesus. Oh, you're so annoying. Being annoying is not racist. It's what Jesus wants. <laughs> what? Shut the fuck up. Oh, the next so day annoying. on March 26th, Lauren Chen hosted a space on Twitter where people could come talk about the Christ is King phrase <gasps> and the firing of Candace Owens from the Daily Wire. The space consists of many Christians and conservative voices like Carlin Borisenko and Sovereign Bra from the Whatever podcast. Soon after the space starts, Nick Fuentes joins. And so does CEO of the Daily Wire, Jeremy Boring, <laughs> where he's asked about the firing of Candace Owens. Hey, what's up, everyone? The following is heavily edited to save time. That's what Tom's note says in the corner. Greetings. Can you hear me? We can hear yeah, you. All right. Look, to just be plain, I mean, let's just say the elephant in the room. I'm sorry. ND, correct. What would Lauren think if Muslims were tagging her with may Allah guide you? Bro, these people act like, oh, it's okay when we do it, but it's not okay when you do it. I don't want to hear it. Also, I love that I grew up Catholic because honestly, we minded our own business. I will say growing up, I remember people coming to our door and being like, can I talk to you about Jesus Christ? I was like, nah, girl, I already know him and he's Catholic. Thank you. <laughs> Rome. You know, it is about forcing a contradiction between Christianity and Jews. At least it is for me. I feel like everyone knew just, you know, a week ago, if you heard a Christ is King chant at a rally or a political thing, it's Groypers. It's Groypers that are doing that thing. The, the fundamental point I want to make is this. I think what a lot of people are afraid to say, um, and I'm not going to say it's anti-Semitic, what people are afraid to say and to own is that when you say Christ is King, it is an act of rebellion because we happen to have a conservative movement that is run by atheists and Jews and gay people. But a lot of them are Jews, disproportionately more of them. Christian um, conservatives we begin to own is that when you say Christ is King, it is an act of rebellion because we happen to have a conservative movement that is run by atheists and Jews and gay people. But a lot of them are Jews, disproportionately more of them. Christian conservative movement. And it is exclusionary. That is at the Yo, what group is Jewish, atheist, and gay? Because that sounds kind of fire, bro. What? The exclusion of people that are not Christians <laughs> who are Jews. <clears throat> and, you know, let, but we have to own that. Yeah, well, I just, you know, let's just ask you point blank, because this is what people are going to be tweeting about when they listen to the space. When you are saying to a Jewish person specifically, Christ is king, are you doing it in a hateful way? Or is it a way, or is it an invitation? I don't hate anyone. You know, I'm, I'm branded a racist anti-Semite. I have friends of all different kinds. You know, Laura Loomer's been a close friend of mine for years. There are genuine people that hate Jews for being Jews that attack me for that. And I've said on my show, I've said, well, some of some of my best friends are Jews. See, the problem with Nick is he tries to play this game of like, I don't want to kill the Jews. I just don't want to be around them. And I'm like, yeah, that's kind of a problem. I don't want to, like, that's Nick's problem is he wants segregation. I'm like, mm, that's kind of the problem. Jews. Some of the smartest people I know are Jews. Hey, hey, wait, we, have, we have Jeremy yeah, Boring no, here. Yeah. Let, let's hear from Jeremy Boring. Jeremy Boring, come on up. Jer Jeremy, <sighs> what did Candace do that she deserved to be fired? Well, I'm not going to have a conversation about Candace. When you run a business, you're not at liberty to have discussions about people that you fire. Uh, <laughs> I know that everybody would like for me to be able to do that. I'm not able to do that. Did the ADL or Media Matters, did they contribute to your decision to fire her? No. Media Matters is like the greatest gift ever given to the Daily Wire. I love that they literally pay people six figures a year to listen to all of my content and promote it for me. 
I can't believe that they continue to do it. It's the stupidest organization that ever existed. The ADL's garbage. I don't care what the ADL thinks any more than I care what Rabbi Shmuley thinks. I mean, when the when the ADL drops something like that and then Candace gets let go 24 hours later, it, it looks suspicious. Yeah, and I understand that people who are looking for a conspiracy will find one. Ben Shapiro is as critical of the ADL as anybody out there. I've never met anyone at the ADL. I've never said a positive word about the ADL. The Daily Wire, I can't. don't think you can find a host at the Daily Wire has ever had a positive thing to say about the ADL. Jeremy, I'm just wondering, and I guess I'm asking this as a yes or no question, did Candace Owens violate any specific policies at the Daily Wire? I'm not going to make any comment about the Daily Wire separation from Candace Owens in this forum. If, if she violated a company policy, you would have Is been able lesbian? to say yes to the question, Jeremy. I know that much. After the Twitter space ended and everybody left, Candace commented under it saying, the most interesting part of this for me was that I never knew Nick Fuentes was blacklisted when he was just 18 years old from people at the Daily Wire, smearing him for asking questions about Israel. <laughs> Nick says they fed him to the ADL. As many people brought up in this conversation, it is ironic to say the least that someone clearly fed me to the ADL upon my departure from the Daily Wire. And they did this by trying to smear me as somehow connected to Nick Fuentes via Christ is King, although I legitimately do not know Nick. It's very tribal and it's very, it's very, like, even in the right, like, mm -hmm. look what's going on with Candace Owens and I, Ben Shapiro. Dude. Like, what did she say? I want to know what was she, what she was fired for. Because was it criticism of Israel? Was it... Um, was she fired or did she leave of her own volition? I'm not going to speak to this topic, Pierce. At, at all. At Is nobody doing their research? I feel like they should just watch Tom's video. I think you would fire <clears throat> Candace too. Excuse me. I think if Joe Rogan watched that video of Candace, he would have fired her too. She's obnoxious and annoying. And who wants to work with a girl like that? Like, who wants to work with that person who's pushing, like, anti-Jewish, like, conspiracy theories? Like, who wants to? I don't want to be around you. You are a net negative for the world. You know, instead of asking Ben Shapiro, which I hate, <clears throat> watch the data. Like, watch. you should watch Tom's video. Tom, you need to send this to Joe Rogan so he knows why Candace got let go. Because who wants to work with that? Not me. Not me. At all. You can't give me any uh, insight into why she departed? No hints, no nothing. I'm not going to speak to this. C can, I ask, can I ask why? I mean, you can ask. No, no, I'm not, you can ask why you don't want to say anything. Um, again, you can ask. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I mean I only, I'm only curious because I know what a, a staunch defender of free speech you are. <sighs> And it would surprise me if it had been someone's opinions that would make you want to part company with them. Nah, -uh. cases of Jamie started pushing trans kids narratives, Joe would likely not keep him around for long. I've seen Joe support trans people and trans rights, maybe not trans kids uh, ter in terms of surgery, which I think is a pretty centrist take, right? But I've seen Joe support trans people. Has Joe become like less pro-trans over the years? I haven't watched him in a really long time. Or is it just that he's anti-trans uh, kids transitioning as children medically? You know what I mean? Which I think is a pretty centrist take, right? But I'm sure that whole thing was rather unpleasant. <laughs> it's now spun into a debate about whether the Daily Wire is pro-free speech. Uh, the accusation is you are until it comes to Israel. How do you respond? I mean, what I will say is that we have a wide variety of positions no. on Israel. Ben Shapiro, I am your marketing agent. We are pro-free speech uh, until it comes to racism. or anti-Semitism because Candace is being anti-Semitic. I'm sorry, like what the fuck? I don't live under a rock that bad. No, if somebody in my life was spouting off those things, I would say, hey, when did you become anti-Semitic? And I do listen for those things because when you have conservative family that listen to conservative radio and sometimes they say things, you're like, ah, who have you been listening to? No, no, who have you been listening to? Who told you that? Where'd you get that information? No, actually, I'm telling you, Reese, didn't I tell you what my mom said about Candace and my dad? I told you, didn't I? They go back and forth. But both my dad and my mom were like, hmm, something's up with Candace. And my mom's like, I don't know if I like her. And I'm like, I'm telling you, even conservatives, that's what I look for. I try to make sure that my parents stay on the normal side of conservatism. Don't go into the anti-Semitic. Don't go into QAnon. Don't go into the crazy world. The crazy conservatives, they need to stay crazy. But the centrist conservatives, like the regular conservatives, they need to stay you know, on the other side, mm -mm, that's what I'm paying attention to. I'm like, nope, absolutely not. 
Candace Owens was being anti-Semitic as fuck, bro. There's no way. Whether she is anti-Semitic in her heart, I don't know. But the fact that she was willing to be anti-Semitic in her language fucking sucks. Right now inside the Daily Wire, Matt Walsh obviously is another one of the hosts at the Daily Wire. He and I wildly disagree about what America's Israel policy should be. Matt is much more isolationist. He basically believes the United States has no no real interests in the Middle East, and thus the United States should not be providing material support to anyone, including the state of Israel. You know, Matt obviously is well within you know the, the the sort of group of hosts that we have here at the Daily Wire. So clearly whatever is going on is not about Israel specifically. That's really all I have to say about it. As far as the free speech of it, as I've said before, you know, the, the Daily Wire is a, a publisher, not a platform. You know, to the extent that, that the Daily Wire is in fact not a publisher, it is a pla that, that is in fact not a platform, it is a publisher. That means that- That's a nice jacket, right? I really like this aesthetic, bro. I kind of want, I will love this color. What is this, like a rose? Like a rose? I like this. There is no moral obligation for the Daily, and there's no free speech problem with the Daily Wire saying we don't wish to pay a particular host or that <gasps> host saying, I don't wish Yo, to- Yo, Tom Foolery in the chat. Tom, this is so good, Tom. Tom, it's so good. We've loved it. Fuck, this is so difficult. Candace is such a drag. I can't believe you sat through all of this. Tom Foolery in the chat, guys. Please go check it out. We love uh, this video. Good job. Good job. To work here anymore because, again, there's a parting of the ways that I'm, that, you know, is not really open for discussion at this point. Everyone is able to say what they want. Nobody ever comes mm. to me and says, you can't say X. Nobody ever says that to Walsh. And no one ever said that to Candace. But the Ooh, David, reality David. is that there is an Overton window at the Daily Wire. Obviously, there was a non-meeting of the minds. That's pretty much all I can say on this. Am I the only one realizing this incredible? It's in the same. It's not even like a couple minutes apart. It's not even 30 seconds apart. In the same sentence, he's saying at the Daily Wire, everyone can say whatever they want. You're, you're allowed to say whatever you want. No one tells you what to say. But obviously, there are certain things where if you say you won't work here. <laughs> Okay, so if that's the if that's the case, why was there so much uproar? With why the is their PR team so bad? Just show the clips of Candace and say we don't want this fucking attitude at our business. Like, why is his PR team so bad at answering this question? I know it's hard. I mean, it's so difficult to defend yourself, but Candace is being a bitch. She's being anti-Semitic and a bitch. She can't stay on the team. No, you can't sit with us. We were pink on Wednesdays, and you can't sit with us. Jesus, no, who would want that on their team? She's literally being anti-Semitic. What the fuck? Just say, we cannot have somebody who appears to be uh, associating and uh, promoting uh, rhetoric against anybody, let alone Jewish people. It just, it feels unsafe. Like, what the fuck? New York Times decided to fire two of its editors for publishing Tom Cotton's op-ed that called for the deployment of American military to quell the Black Lives Matter movement. The New York Times editors were simply saying what Ben uh, Shapiro was saying. On March 30th, Candace tweeted out the Glenn Greenwald clip where she states, Ben, we agreed not to talk about- Oh, Freya says apparently, Freya says apparently she might sue them if they say why they fired her. Ooh, then I assume it's a contract thing. <gasps> Ooh, I love legal matters. Okay, well then it's a contract thing. That makes sense, of course. This isn't some YouTube like gotcha video receipts and cancellation. This is like, I guess, you know, millions of dollars are on the line here. So that makes sense about this. But you are very much going on a public tour <sighs> right now, pretending not to talk about it while you are very much talking about it. Would you like me to do the same? YouTube shows from all over the political spectrum called out. P.S. I don't think it's actually hypocritical for conservatives to be anti free speech in moments like this because no one's actually pro free speech. Progressives do the same thing all the time. Like we're tolerant. We want to see everyone's perspective. We want diversity. But like, no, you don't. And nobody does. Nobody, everybody has a line that's too far for them to tolerate. All of us are intolerant at a certain point, which we should be. The question we're always arguing is when are you intolerant too much and when are you tolerant too much, right? That's always a good conversation to have. Hey, you're being too tolerant of that behavior. Ooh, I think you should be more intolerant of that behavior. Nobody actually believes in free speech. It's like a... It's a brand thing. Free speech is like a brand thing. You know, we all have a line of when we're going to say, OK, this is too much. Ben in the Daily Wire for hypocrisy. In this conversation, he makes. Yo, we talked about this. I love flagrant. The argument for censorship, but he's basically like there's a window of ideas we accept. So we accept ideas between here and here. And anything outside of that window, well, you're fireable. That's censorship. What? But yeah. he's acting as if this is like 
a justified reason for firing people when you built your identity and plan. Yeah, but I don't know if everyone saw all the clips and everyone saw her connection to Nick Fuentes and everyone saw all the details. And then, you know, a little bit of mean, like I wouldn't be excited if I heard someone like Candace Owens was on anyone's team. Anyone who hires Candace Owens, red flag. That's how I feel about that. If you hire Candace Owens, I'm looking at you funny. Like I'm looking at you funny. Platform off of no censorship and freedom of yes, speech. And yeah. Facts don't care about your feelings and all this shit. It's also funny. Like I disagree with Ben's politics, but I respect him more for firing Candace Owens or not him because it wasn't his his, you know, choice. But I respect them for firing Candace Owens. Now, if only they would continue with everybody else. <laughs> that that window happens to end where his beliefs end. Yet he was quite critical when The New York Times fired journalists for publishing Tom Cotton's article. Right. See, he was ready. I didn't know this. This <laughs> motherfucker was ready. I didn't know. I was out. I was going to do other things. <laughs> now, <laughs> now, that is kind of, that kind of hypocritical, no? Seems a bit. Yeah. On the same day, an account called Censored Man tweeted out leaks from Daily Wire employees claiming that there were private meetings and that employees were being intimidated in an attempt to brainwash them that Candace Owens was an anti-Semite. And those employees are now- I mean, they don't need help. They just need to watch Nick Fuentes' love for her and all the bullshit she keeps saying. Planning a lawsuit against the company. The email read, bombshell leak. Candace Owens was fired for saying Christ is king. Jeremy Boring sent an email to all Daily Wire employees, inviting them to an impromptu town hall in Candace Owens' studio. The four employees told me that the town hall attempted to brainwash the employees present into believing that Candace was, in fact, an anti-Semite. Some employees are planning a lawsuit against the Daily Wire, feeling intimidated and threatened by the meeting, and also because of what they believe is an attack on Christianity at the company. Candace quote tweets this email saying that she'll go on Joe Rogan's show to talk about her firing while pretending not to talk about her firing. Jeez. And as more and more shows on both the left and the right argue over what Candace was fired over, to me it's pretty clear. Her anti-Semitism and conspiracy theories had gone way too far. Mm -hmm. People kept calling her critical of Israel, but I never really saw any critiques. Mm. Only the tweet about genocide. Nick and Groypers chant Christ is King to say, Jews will not replace us. It's the phrase, it's okay to be white all over again. White nationalists use that phrase the same way that they use 1350. It's okay to be white was posted on flyers and posters all over cities where BLM protests would take place. They purposefully use inoffensive language to communicate something very different because they know those who aren't in the know mm -hmm. will defend the statements, mm -hmm. causing an uproar in fights. Yep. That's why it's called a dog whistle. Only some people know what's actually being said. Yep. Is it okay to be white? Of course. Is it okay to say? Depends on the context. Mm. Just as it's okay to say Christ is king in certain contexts. But Candace obviously copied the Groyper's dog whistle when she continuously started posting it at Jewish people. It's not a Jewish nation. Christ is king! While also constantly complaining about Jewish people on her shows. And even trying to make it sound like Nazis weren't so bad. And even with anti-Semitism as blatant as hers, You'll still have Daily Wire employees complaining that her firing was anti-Christian and threatening to sue the company. Or people like Lauren Chen continuing to defend both Nick and Candace, Ugh. saying they aren't saying anything. Lauren! Uh, Lauren! Uh, the prettiest people are the dumbest. Just kidding. Lauren, get your shit together. Being anti-Semitic because they don't hate Jews. He also accused Candace Owens of some pretty terrible things. Dog whistling that Hitler was okay, uh, just because she did a segment about Nazi book burnings and a lot of people don't know that actually- Which by the way, is it crazy that you're praising Hitler for burning books? What, because they were socialist books? Is that the argument? The, the Nazis were burning like LGBT and socialist books. Man, I... I am... Yo. So I'm... I have... I'm trying to be better. I'm trying to be better. I'm trying to be better. Oh, um, why don't LGBT people feel safe around us? You know who is really great? Hitler. Why? He burnt LGBT books. Why do LGBT people seem to like really hate Christians? What have we ever done to them? 
You know who I really like? You remember that Hitler guy? He burned LGBT books. Base. Ooh, I have so many things I could say, but I'm not going to say it either. Ooh, I'm going to... Ooh, ooh, I could... Mm, I'm trying to be better. I'm trying not to get clipped out of context by these fucking losers on the internet. These fucking losers who keep trying to get me out of context like they are not the worst people on the planet. Net negatives, all of them net negatives. Ooh, Tom Fuller said I made a YouTube short on that clip two weeks ago. Ooh, I just want to fight her, bro. Lauren Chen, I've worked with Lauren. Do better, Lauren. What the fuck? These weren't lines drawn on Israel, Palestine, or Jews versus Christians, or right <gasps> versus left, or whether you think Christ is king is an okay thing to say. These are lines drawn based on populism. Candace Owens, Nick Fuentes, Lauren Chen, Donald Trump, even Tucker Carlson. These are all populists. It would be easy to say that they just have a different perspective and ideology, but it becomes more and more obvious that they are completely disconnected from reality. Mm. Populism requires the belief in conspiracy theories. Just as liberals believe in the separation of church and state, populists believe in the separation of mind and truth. You must deny the facts, even when they are right in front of your face, because truth might help the bad guys. These are the people who believe the election was stolen, that vaccines were bad, that white people are under attack, they believe in all sorts of conspiracy theories because their ideology is based on the need for their own oppression. Mm. Why wouldn't they also start to believe in anti-Semitic tropes like Jews ruling the world from a shadowy back room while smoking cigars? You might think, it's weird to say the side that's claiming a phrase isn't anti-Semitic is the side that desires oppression. And while I understand that sentiment, they only won't acknowledge the facts because that would deny their own victim status. In a country majority white and Christian, and with most current CEOs and presidents in history, white Christians. You either aren't oppressed or you don't have a race and religion worth fighting for. When you can't acknowledge that context changes language and what's being communicated, and your arguments lack any nuance, you aren't mm -hmm. looking for truth. When you say things like, facts can't be racist, you've absolved yourself of all faculties in a poor attempt to win at team sports. Mm -hmm. You stop Ooh. caring about right and wrong. Yo, that was fire, bro. That was poetry of all faculties in a poor attempt to win at team sports. Ooh, girl. You stop caring about right and wrong and only care about being on the side of the good guys. It isn't surprising at all that the Daily Wire fired Candace Owens. The only part that's surprising is that the people who so readily denounced the alt-right and were harassed by groipers didn't fire her sooner. I loved it. So fucking good. Just want to make sure I didn't miss anything. No, no, no. Okay. I wasn't. Oh, oh. Jewish. <laughs> I had a feeling. I had a feeling. I was like, I think we're missing something. Literally go to Tom's channel right now. I already look. I already made a Pikachu face on it because I'm a member. Okay. Check that out. Check out the video. It's a great video. Good job, Tom. That was awesome. Thank you.